guys, welcome to the Sam Fan Club Podcast. I'm your host, Victoria L. Johnson, and I'm here with Stefan Mateer. If you don't know, he's the creator of one of the dopest mangas out here, Teflon Funk. Hey, Stefan! Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I've been wanting to have you on for so long, especially after, um, I know you've been, you're a Sailor Moon fan, and so... Yes, 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 I am. And I love Teflon Funk. Like, I've been a fan for a really long time, as you know. Like, Thank I think you. I've, Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I think I've interviewed like you like twice. Oh uh, yeah, I, yeah. I think I believe it was twice. Yes. Yeah. So like yeah, just going way back. And yeah, super hype. Um. So the first question I ask everyone is, uh, what's your first memory of watching Sailor Moon? Oh, um, <laughs> I first saw Sailor Moon around the time I was about eight. Um, at the time I was st- I was living in Maryland. Uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, and um, the school I used to go to we started at nine in the morning. Uh, yeah, it's pretty late, so they have cartoons playing in the morning, and the cartoons in the morning uh, be playing up until I think about nine a.m. Uh, eight, eight, nine eight a.m. I believe. And as I'm sitting waiting for the bus, they they be playing Sailor Moon, but then they play it again at four p.m. in the afternoons. So that's how I first heard of Sailor Moon. Uh, that was the first my first experience of like seeing it. I was like, "Wow, what are these? What are these girls? These big eyes and thick thighs? Like, this is interesting, you know." So that's that's how I first uh, that was my first experience with Sailor Moon. I love that, like big eyes and thick thighs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd never seen anything like that before. I mean, it wasn't my first the first anime series I'd seen, mm. but it was the first time I realized. The difference between Japanese animation and American animation. Gotcha. What was that the first sense. anime? It does, yeah. I, I I mentioned this actually. I mentioned this at your uh, the panel I did for uh, at at NYC. Mm-hmm. Um, it was this cartoon based that, that played in the early nineties. Um, on on Nick Junior. Uh, it was called The Little Bits. Hmm. Um. I mean, looking back, I didn't know it was an anime at the time, but looking back, I found out it was an anime. Yeah. And they brought it over to the States, and uh, ironically, they kept the same name, which is not you know very common back then. Yeah. And it was called, if you look it up on YouTube, you just type in Little Bits at an anime, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, for the older fans, they'll, they'll know what I'm talking about, but it was a show they played on Nick Jr. So it was like these little little munchkin-like kids, they were like the size of like, uh, like kind of like elves, and they didn't even kind of like a smurf thing but they live in mushrooms they live in mushrooms and villages and they used to ride around in a flying squirrel and stuff what? <laughs> it was, yeah it was interesting yeah look you look it up for youtube because uh i don't know if episodes are there but i, I did find it on youtube i found it on youtube one time and they were playing oh, i like, see little bits yeah little okay. bits and they have it in japanese i never seen the japanese one obviously but I, it was in mm-hmm. english they brought it on nick jr that was my that was my first first anime this is back in like 1992 yeah, I wouldn't have guessed this was anime either, because it kind of reminds me of like, um, was like the Great Mouse Detective, or even like Smurfs. Like it kind of feels like yeah, similar yeah, to yeah, that yeah. kind of yeah. That's um, probably why and, they brought it here. Yeah, it was like it's right on in. Yep. Yeah, but yeah, I think Sailor Moon for me was the first time. Like I didn't, I didn't know it was anime. But it was the first thing. Well, it was the first anime I watched alongside Dragon Ball Z, and. It was definitely the first time, like, I was like, this is something different. I don't know why or how, but it's different. <laughs> um, I mean, I'll be honest. I, I, I watched mm-hmm. it because I just thought they were hot. You know, I, was mm-hmm. eight, you know, I, was like, I mean, I didn't know, I didn't know what that was at the time. I was like, oh, wow, these are, these are some, uh, interesting <laughs> looking girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was interesting. So, yeah. I, and one thing I always noticed, though, was like, wow, when they transform, like, they get all the curves for some reason. I don't see it when they were like regular kids. When they were just, that's just something I noticed as a kid. I don't know if it was that was still the case, but I just remember as a kid, I was like, "Wow, they're like kids here." But when they transform, they got like all these. Mm. <laughs> Yo, we had yeah. a, a crystal. Crystal, um, she was on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, she does get in the robot, uh, which is now beyond the Thought on YouTube. But uh, oh, I love that channel. I was yeah. mad when they, when they, when they, they I was like, why can't you give them the channel? <laughs> I know, but I was happy when they they're back beyond yeah, the bot. They are back. They are back. Yeah. But um, she was on the show. Cool. She told me that in Latin America, and she's from Dominican Republic. They were actually naked <laughs> when they transformed. Yeah, yeah, they were. They are. They are. Yeah, like full on nudity. Yeah, I was just they, like, are. What? they are. 
I haven't watched. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be honest. I mm-hmm. haven't. Like I know you can watch it on Hulu now. Mm-hmm. It's uncut and everything. Because my sister just recently rewatched the whole series. Yeah. And um, I haven't watched it fully in Japanese uncut. Like I like, I I'm just basing it off of when I watched it as a kid. And then I remember they brought it. They they brought it to Cartoon Network eventually i'm sorry tsunami cartoon network tsunami mm-hmm. and then um they played the episodes that were you know that were uh dubbed at the time mm-hmm. and then you know after eventually the people who were doing it before stopped and then it came and then they, they decided to make more episodes and dub more episodes and yep. this was like a couple of years later around 99 2000 and then they had the opening and everything and all that stuff and um it was uh they did come out uncut eventually on dvd but they were they were edited, but not as edited as it was before when it was playing on like at the time in Maryland when I was watching it, it was on um, WB channel fifty, you know the local mm-hmm. channel for war, you know the WB, and um, that was really 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 edited, highly edited. And then um, though this one on Tsunami, the new episodes af- like afterwards, they they were edited, but not as edited. They had some more, they showed more violence, which was very very welcoming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Always welcome for the violence. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, the Hulu version is really good. Um, just because obviously it's uncut, but I still have yeah. love for the original. Yeah, dub. I definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, they're really good. I definitely, I definitely have to get around to watching it. I do. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm not gonna lie. I've been slacking. I, I've been, I've been watching anime for other reasons. For I'll, I'll just put it this way: I've been watching it for research. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hint, hint, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. Did um? Do you remember any like any specific moments you liked or any favorite like episodes? Um, I do remember a funny moment. Um, I uh, I don't know if you remember this episode. It was when it was when, I, I don't remember their names. This is how long it's been. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Sailor Jupiter. Mm-hmm. Um. She was uh she was ice skating. Mm-hmm. I, I think it was the episode she was doing the ice skating, and then like the two couples that were uh they got possessed. Yeah. By the megaverse. Yes. And they attacked her, you know, beat the beat, beat the crap out of her. Mm-hmm. And then I remember, you know, they came in like the rest of the they came in, they fought, they defeated them, and they turned back to normal, and then they're all happy, and then like you see them in the background, they're like skating like. Ah! It's like it's like panning, and it, it was just so weird. I, I, I know it's silly what I'm saying, but they, it was just so silly how they were spinning around. They were like, "Oh, back to normal." Ah. It, it was so silly. Like I just remember that because they're like the, the sailor cows are all talking in the background, and then the others are like, "You see, them, they're, they're talking in the foreground, and in the background, you see them two holding your hands and skating and spinning around, ah. <laughs> like back and forth." It's hard to explain, but it was, it was hilarious. That's such that. a specific thing. That's so funny. Yeah, I remember that seeing it as a kid. I was like, "What?" I was so silly. <laughs> I thought it was so silly. And then, uh, and then I remember the nerd. Uh, oh, Melvin. The, the Melvin Flash with the glasses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with the with the with the swirls in his glasses. Mm-hmm. His eyeglasses. That Classic. was hilarious. Yeah. That was hilarious. Uh, um, and then I remember he went out with the girl. Um, what was her name? Molly. Molly. Yes, mm-hmm. Molly. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm bad. It's been so long. Um, uh, Molly, and then I loved, I loved how she had such an accent. It's like, oh, what do you think we're gonna do, doll? Like, I'm like, why she got a Jersey accent? Yeah, she <laughs> has a lives, Brooklyn accent. Why she got like a Jersey slash like Long Island accent? Yeah. She, this is this is supposed to be with Tokyo. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. You know, I I figured um I read something before I said because in Japan she has a in the Japanese version she has a. A different accent than everyone else because she's like her family's supposed to be from i guess the country mm, so that was their ah, way to kind of make it like her different interesting. in the american version i don't know why they chose like jersey long island <laughs> but <laughs> i thought it was funny yeah i, I do really want to get the voice actors for molly on here just so i can ask her all these questions because i'm like what does was she this? does the the the, the mm-hmm. current one like because this is the old that i'm talking about the old, yeah does the one from the I don't know if you saw the new dub, mm-hmm. but uh, does she still have that thick accent in the new dub too? She doesn't. Okay, she mm-hmm. does. Okay, I'm about to mm-hmm. say. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but, okay. That'll be funny. <laughs> okay, do you, let me ask you something though. So, mm-hmm. do you do? You, I mean, I can tell, 
but mm-hmm. uh, do you ever watch an anime and you can tell when uh, like they have an accent? Sometimes, but I think it's usually by how they're like acting, like their physical movements. Because I feel like if it's someone who's supposed to be like kind of more uncultured, they kind right. of like exaggerate more. They're like louder. So I just kind of assume, like, okay, this person's supposed to be like different, right? Okay, mm-hmm. okay, just, just, just curious, but not really. I don't think. Other I, than I can that. tell. I'm able to mm-hmm. tell it uh, more now than before. That's like, cool. When, when, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, maybe because I've been to Japan so much, but I, 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 I can't tell mm-hmm. now. I, I definitely can tell. It. The subtle flex. Yeah, it's just subtle. <laughs> you have to like listen close. Yeah, you, no, it's true. You have to listen a little closer though. But yeah, you, mm-hmm. you can definitely hear it. Now I'm talking about you like I've been to Japan so much. It's a little little subtle flex, but no. <laughs> no, not, I'm not even flexing though. Okay, well, I'll flex. Yeah. I'll flex right now, real quick. Um, okay. So I've been visiting Japan since 2008. So. Man, I'm jealous. Yeah, I've been nothing. once, and I want to go back so bad. I oh man. I'm definitely yeah, going I, back for uh, Super Mario World. Oh yeah, definitely. They're gonna bring it here to the states, but I want to. I want. I want this one though. Mm-hmm. I want to see that one, but um, oh, but I remember I did remember um, I, I I went one time when I was on vacation to uh to Japan around this is 2013 around this was around May, and I actually have a video of it actually still. Um, I was in Akihabara. And did you go there when you when you first visited? Yeah, I stayed around there. Okay. Oh, per- I was really wow. happy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, well, not, I was yeah around yeah, it. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've never stayed there. I had a friend of mine that, that he, every time he'd go, he'd always stay there. But uh, for me, I would always, uh, for some reason, I always end up staying in Shinjuku. So, I love Shinjuku. Shinjuku. Yeah, Shinjuku. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if you noticed, but Shinjuku is the largest train station in the world. Yes, because I got lost. <laughs> yes, so don't feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> don't feel bad. Don't feel yeah. bad. Um. But uh, in 2013, I went out there in, in in the middle of May, and it was great. I think that's a great time to go. Mm-hmm. But I was in Akihabara, and two things I remember. One of the two things, well, a couple things I remember. When I was there, I was actually trying to, I went there to get some gifts for people while I was over there. Just, just some souvenirs. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, before I used to, when I would travel, I would get souvenirs for people. I don't do that anymore. I'm like, nah, get your own. So, <laughs> I don't do that no more. I'm not it is a lot. No, you know what it is? Because I used to do that, but when I would go to Japan or whatever, but a lot of times they don't even go, they don't even come pick it up or get it or whatever, or, oh, or, wow. or I give it to them. They don't even say thank you. You know, I'm like, ah, get your own. So, I, I just like, I'm, I ain't doing it. Right. So, um, you know, when you walk out the station, I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw this when you were there, but when you walk out the station, they have the Tamashi Nations figures like in display and um it's like a like you walk out the station you see it but um i remember seeing um one at well it wasn't outside the station it was outside it was it was it, it was in the middle of Akihabara by one of the um the game shops well it was kind of far from it i'm sorry i'm, I'm getting into a lot of detail but mm-hmm. i i remember uh seeing the the, the bandai tamashi nations figure uh, of Sailor Moon, they had a whole collection there, and um, it was really nice, really nicely articulated. Like it was, I was like, "Wow, this is really nice." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I remember they had a whole, because what they'll do if it's a new set, they'll put the whole set on display. They'll put the whole set on mm-hmm. display, like in, in, in case in glass, and and they'll have the figure with their different poses and accessories and whatnot. So I thought it was pretty cool. I, I don't think they were out at the time. This was like 2013. Mm-hmm. And oh, then, yeah. yeah, and then. The funny part, right after, while I was out there, um, I, I was walking in the middle of the street, just trying to head back to my, it was a Sunday, it was Sunday afternoon, and I was heading back to, I was trying to walk back to the station, so, you know, because I think I was leaving the following day, because um, my flight was like leaving Monday afternoon, so I said, I'm, I'm going to just retire to my, my, my little room, and just relax, whatever, for the rest of the night, but... I ended up getting, not lost, but I ended up getting kind of stuck because I just so happened to be there during Golden Week. And I don't know if people are familiar with Japanese culture, but Golden Week is a big, like, holiday in Japan. 
and let me tell you, the streets were so like so crowded, and it took me forever to even find where my train station was, and it was up to the point where they had pe- they had their I saw them walking through the street. The street it was so crowded. Oh my, I can't even. I have to show you the video. You have to see the video. I'm talking about. It was so crowded. There must have been at least like two, three, maybe four hundred thousand people in the streets. It was insane. And this is like wow. the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, middle of the middle of the afternoon. It was like four or five p.m. Um, on a Sunday, and I remember just they were walking around and they were holding. It was like you know, you know that I forgot what it's called, but when they have people sitting on a, uh, they have that thing where it's four people holding a peg, and it's like a and a person sits on it or whatever, or or, or mm-hmm. they're standing on. I don't know. If, I, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm trying to explain. Okay, kind of like when they would show like, okay, you know, like in Samurai Shampoo, mm-hmm. and they would show like the royal people. Oh, and okay. They'd be like, yeah, and, they're, and they're, that's how they're going around it, like like four person, like each person holding a peg, and they're running through whatever. That's how they're getting around, whatever. I guess that's that was their version of a limousine, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I saw like I saw that, and it, it was four of them holding, got a ring robe, and they all had a bandana on. You know, I think it said Ichiban, and mm-hmm. the guy up top, the guy standing on top of it he had his robe on he had a blue robe on he had a bandana tied around his head and then he was like waving waving his fans and going, ah, 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 ah. It, it was the most insane thing i'd ever seen um sounds epic yeah it was epic i, I I'll, I'll send you the video <laughs> but um yeah yeah i still this is from 2013 in the spring and um that was my first and only time i'd been there in golden week and that just like my brain was just like overloaded with just like wow this is amazing I, was like, I can't I can't leave now so I just stuck around for a bit um yeah it was it was it was insane so I find that funny how the ceiling with memories connected to this so I was looking around and stuff <laughs> and then <laughs> I remember seeing a really and I remember also too because uh they had like these waffle cones like ice cream they were selling like, waffle cones nearby and mm-hmm. I was thinking about getting it and I remember just this very beautiful black woman passed by I was like wow <laughs> so it's like so many so many things going on. I was like, wow, she's really nice. <laughs> and then and all of a sudden I see this big crowd of people and they're like <laughs> and then all this uh waving and stuff like oh my goodness. It was it was I can't even it was literally three, four hundred thousand people in the streets. Oh my god. The streets was flooded. I was like I'm like, what is going on? I asked somebody, so what's going on? It's like, oh golden I was like Oh, mm. <laughs> I just happened. I just happened to be there, like just fly that day, just be out there on vacation on that week. Wow, of all the weeks. I'm not sure if you ever heard of it yourself, but yeah, no, I just looked it up, and I've heard of Children's Day, which is like it seems like it's like a a bunch of holiday, like four holidays throughout the, like the end of April, early May. Yes, yes, and, that's um, that's when I was there. Yeah, man. that's when I was there. It was insane, mm-hmm. insane, insane. Mm. It's like. Because when I got out the station to go walk around and buy souvenirs and stuff, um, no, I mean, yeah, it was packed, but it was fine. Mm-hmm. But then when I was just heading back, I don't know how long I was out, maybe. I must have been out maybe about an hour, hour and a half, maybe. Mm-hmm. And it was just, the streets were just flooded. Just there. Just there. It was like, that blew my mind, you know? What? And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was insane. It was insane. But, um. Yeah, I mean, it was a great memory, it's, you know. So thanks, Sailor Moon. Yay, Sailor Moon wins <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was really fascinating. That was, that was a really one. fascinating. Oh. Yeah. I will say, well, I, I do have another memory of mm-hmm. um, of Sailor Moon. I do remember when they started playing newer episodes, mm-hmm. and um, they had uh, Sailor Uranus and Sailor, what was it? Was it Uranus? Or was, she, was she Neptune? Neptune, Neptune yes. Mm-hmm. Uranus and Neptune, and at the time, uh, they were cousins. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we all know this, but <laughs> I'm just telling you mm-hmm. when I was growing up and about this, and then, um, because you know I thought they were gonna say, oh, they're gonna say Uranus. I was like, oh, it's Uranus. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So that's how you're supposed to say it. So people, when they say Uranus, I'm like, oh, come on, man. Uh, you know how you pronounce it, it's Uranus. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, and that, that's another thing too. I learned how to say 
urine is right because when she me when, too. yeah <laughs> so it said I was like, oh, it's not your it's, it's not your race. It's your race. Oh, you guys are stupid. You guys can't even read. <laughs> so, so speaking of it, so yeah, when they played at Carson Network back in 99, 2000, they were cousins. Mm-hmm. But I found out through my friend at school, because we were talking about it. I was like, yeah, they're not cousins, man. They're, they're, they're lovers, man. They're girlfriend and girlfriend. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. I was like, why, why do they make them cousins? Oh, okay, I guess because, you know, Carson Network, oh, Mm-hmm. But yeah, but at the time it's like, but my my friends, it was one of my friends, like like, yeah, not, like yo, like you know they're you know you know they're not cousins, right? Like what you mean? No, like, oh, they're lovers. It was like girlfriend and girlfriend. I was like, oh okay, like, yeah, lesbian. Like oh okay, like I was like okay, cool. Like but I get yeah, at the time, you know, it was like oh they, you know, that's yeah, but that's why true. I didn't, yeah, that's but that's why I didn't like you know watching uh certain things on on certain channels at the time. But also it's like you know, you know like like when I was a kid in the nineties, it's like. The network television premiere of this show. I was like, oh, I'm not watching that movie. Come on. like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, they like, oh. cut everything. Yeah, they cut everything. Yeah, watch it on Fox. I'm like, how about no? <laughs> You're going to edit everything. So, so yeah, but I do. That's one memory I did. I remember having, but but we were, we were uh, uh, my friends in, in school were saying, yeah, man, they, they edited that shit, man. I was like, oh, that's stupid. I mean, I yeah. get it. That's stupid. But, yeah, so that's what, that's another memory I remember. Um, Oh, my little cousin, and well, my older my older cousin too. She she was always a fan of Sailor. She loved Sailor Moon. Aww. Like yeah, she she had and her daughter now, who's uh she's seventeen. She's about to be eighteen actually, but she's a big Sailor Moon fan. I bought her. It's, oh yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting. It's to all a, coming back to you now. I love it. It is. It is. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting to a tangent now, but I remember now that figure that I saw at Akihabara. Mm-hmm. I ended up buying that for my cousin back in like 2015 on Amazon because they had they brought it to the stage and had our Am- and I bought it for her mm-hmm. full circle. So yeah, <laughs> oh, that's cool. yeah, yeah. And, and and that's the thing because my 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 older cousin she's like about two years older than me. She was always a big Sailor Moon fan. Um, mm-hmm. and and now you know she and, and she has a daughter and her daughter's now about to be 18. And I, I find it so funny how. Her daughter is a huge Sailor Moon fan, so she put her daughter onto it. Hell yeah! That <laughs> yeah. is like yeah, <laughs> you have to. Like I plan yeah. to do that with my children. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> like... Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, and oh, and guess what? Her name is Victoria too. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, She's yeah, yeah. Many I, call BFF. Her. <laughs> I was just talking. I was just talking to her last night, actually. Um, um, yeah, we call her. You know, I call her Vicky. You know. Yeah. Oh, my family um, calls me Vicky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. So I was talking. I was talking to Vicky about that though. But yeah, um, you know, her. her I, just, I just find it so so funny how my cousin put her daughter onto it. And now she's a she's a big anime head though. She's always like, it. oh, she's she's too much though. She's such a dog. I love her. Yeah, for my um, my cousin's daughter, I sent them like once she turned like five, I sent them the Sailor Moon DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's I was really. like, you can start this now. I started yeah. at six. It should be age appropriate. Um, I don't know if she actually ended up watching. I need to follow up with her on that because it's been a few years. I'm like, where? What season are you up to now? You know? No, no, you definitely, definitely. She has to, yeah, she has to follow up on. Yeah, she's she's almost. I think she's like eight now. So like. No, she's fine. Yeah, she, 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 got, she got. I need to make sure yeah, she, she I catch her in the right. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before no, she, her brain yeah, fully no, formulates. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That's the perfect age. Yeah, and my niece now is. Uh, she's about to be three, so. I'm I'm gonna wait. I'm wait to see. Oh oh no! Come on! Come on! Come on! Yeah. yeah let, let her let her get to know Elmo a little longer. You know? Yeah, you know Sesame <laughs> Street. You know then, right. then we'll introduce you to Sailor Moon. <laughs> That's how you do. It. That's how you. Do it. Yes. Oh my That's god. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sure. do. Hmm? I'm gonna do the same with my like when I when I have kids. I'm gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna be Sonic instead. So. Oh yeah, I know you're a big Sonic fan. Yes, yes. I saw this. I saw this post on IG a while back. It was this. It was this, this father. Uh, hmm. His, his black father and his two sons, I think they were twins. And he got them a, he got him a mohawk and he colored them blue like Sonic. And then I saw it, I'm like, Father of the Year. <laughs> father of the Year. Father of the Year. Get this brother a get this brother a medal right now. Oh my god. <laughs> I aspire to be just like him. And, and and they had matching backpacks. Oh, that's adorable. Exactly. Father of the Year. That's amazing. Yeah. Somebody get this guy word. a medal. I agree. Specific, no, get him a Sega trophy. (laughs) 
Corey. And I'm a Sega. Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking of Sega, um, I have a I have a Sega Mega Drive, mm-hmm. and nice. um, a Japanese. I've been trying to get one forever because I'm a big Sega fan. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I wasn't a Sega kid. I was a Nintendo kid. Um, my my cousin was a Sega kid because she had. I didn't have a Sega Genesis. And, you know, I hated her because she had. I, I could have played Sonic. Anyways, whatever. So I have a Sega Mega Drive, and mm-hmm. um, I love it. I love it to death. I have it hooked up to a CRT television, and, oh and at time, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I do live streams on my TF uh, Instagram. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. It's what, yeah. I, I do. It, I I don't schedule it. I just do it spur of the moment. Mm-hmm. But what what I do is I uh, I have it hooked up to a CRT television, and um, I'll play Mega Drive games on it, or I'll play some dank anime, like. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 cause I have a VCR too hooked up to it. It's a Sony CRT, like a 13 inch CRT, mm-hmm. and I have a a Sony VCR to match with it because you know you have to match the, the you know the the hat with the shoes, you know. So, um, I have the uh, and I have all these anime that I play from from VHS, and I just pop them in and I just live stream and I just talk I just talk shit, and I think it's funny. But uh, but I also what I do is I play my say Mega Drive games, and I don't know if you know this, but they they did drop some Sailor Moon games on both the Sega Mega Drive and the Super Famicom back in the nineties. Yeah, 90s. I do know, and I wanted to play. I want to play them so bad. Yeah, they're beat 'em ups. Uh, yeah. Well, one is a fighting game. They have a fighting game. It's on the Super Famicom. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're uh to get the actual copies though, like they're kind of expensive. Yeah, right? I've looked into it. But and... I got a flat. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was like, I've looked into it, and, like, it's expensive, and, like, yeah, it's hard yeah, to find. And then it's, like, you know, it's a Japanese thing. So you, you don't have need to, like, to know Japanese. Sure. Huh? You don't need to know Japanese. But they do have they do have ROMs that are translated, so it's not hard to, to get into. That's true, yeah. So, I mean, well, I can't afford, you can't, you know, it's, like, 150 Sometimes two, I saw one that was, like, for $300, the original cartridge. So, uh, you know, I have a flash cartridge, which is, you know, a SD card, and then, a micro SD card with all the games in there, you know. Oh, so okay. sue me, sorry, sue me. Well, hey, anyways, I um, like it. right. So I've I've done live streams sometimes where I was playing the beat 'em up game, um, the Sailor Moon beat 'em up game. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's, yeah, it's the beat 'em up. One is the beat 'em up, and it's a fighting game. Mm-hmm. And I think the fighting game is on the yeah, like I said, it's on a Super Famicom. Mm-hmm. And um, they're they're legit good. And I didn't know this. Uh, I don't know if you knew about this. People do fighting tournaments with the Super Famicom fighting game. Yeah, I heard about that. Um, yeah, yeah. I've heard about it. I'm, I need to get into the Sailor Moon gaming community because that is, yeah. it sounds really fun. I forgot, yeah. I'm, I'm looking it up right now. I forgot uh, who developed it. Sailor Moon mm. Mega Drive. Mm. Let me mm. see. Who developed it? Angel. Okay, they're called Angel. Oh. And Bandai, yeah, Bandai, okay, Bandai, Bandai. Uh, published it, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so this came out in '93. Um, yo, see, they brought it to France, but they didn't bring it to the states, right? Like, what about yeah. us? I know, I know, right? They still <laughs> haven't released a Sailor Moon game in the states yet, and I'm like, nope. I don't get why. Never did. They never, never did. did. I don't understand. I'm like, do you not see how many Sailor Moon fans? There's actually a survey going around now, um, for. Uh, people to like ask for a new Sailor Moon game. It's like, what kind of Sailor Moon game would you want? It's not by Bandai or anybody. It's like a fan doing it. Oh, and I'm hoping oh, it gets oh, a lot of traction because I'm like, give us a game, please. Like they had a mobile game that was kind of like be- um, Bejeweled mm, okay. um, or Candy Crush. Um, for okay. And like so many people downloaded it, like it was ridiculous. Just because it's like we like I'm people are you. just hungry for something. See now, I'm sure, I'm trying to look mm-hmm. up what other games. I know they had uh, they had an RPG too. Oh right, they did. They mm-hmm. did. Yeah. So, uh, but I don't think they made any on, on the on like the disc based consoles. I'm not quite sure. I don't think um, so either. Yeah. Right. So, I don't think they made. Yeah, this was a side scroll view up, but okay, it says it was just mm-hmm. called Sailor Moon, I guess. Well, at least in France, uh, so it's Super Nintendo. The second game be created by Angel, and let me see. Said so it follows the first season. I'm sorry, I'm just getting into the details. No, you're um, good. Oh, Arc System Works also developed it. Mm. Oh, I don't know if you know they do the Dragon Ball Fighters. Oh, and, and Guilty Gear, yeah. Oh, they did Persona, oh. yeah. I'm on their uh, thing now too. No, no, uh, that's uh, that's Atlas. That's Atlas. Oh, okay. well, they did Persona 
four, it says here on. Oh, they probably ported it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. On Wikipedia, but you know, on Wikipedia is not. Eh, yeah, 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 it is, you know. It depends. Sometimes. It depends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm like, how many Dragon Ball games do we have? Like, give us one Sailor Moon game at least. You know? I, I agree. I, I, I would love for them to bring these the old games and port them over to, like, right you know, put, a, put a collection together that shit that, that, that shit will sell yeah, real at cool. least like yeah, yeah exactly it'll sell like you saw like color pop did like a sailor moon makeup collection and it sold out in seconds they had to do four different restocks and each of them sold oh out. yeah i did hear about that yeah so i'm like give us a game people want it like some people will just buy anything if sailor moon's on it and i will buy it and play it for sure like put it on like the Switch, like a Sailor Moon game on a Switch would be amazing. It's like, don't y'all like money? Right? And I'm like, you don't no. even have to make a new game, just re release the old one. People will like. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's certain things certain companies do. It's like, don't y'all like money? Right. Easy money. Right. Easy money. Right. Like, like I, I, I'm getting off topic a little bit, but like mm-hmm. for me, a lot of people want me to make more shirts and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I know there's a, there's a big, like, People begging me to make more shirts and like hoodies and stuff, and even down to the comics. But comics, I could do that. Mm-hmm. Shirts, hoodies, it gets a little tricky because, um, you know, uh, the factory that makes my stuff, they're acting funny right now, mm-hmm. and uh, they're giving, you know, they're giving, putting too much rules on what I need to, the bare minimum I have to do, or you have to, you know, so. But I'm mad because it's like I've been dealing with them for so many years, uh, since like 2013, and it's just I'm wow. just mad because it's like, why are you guys acting? Like, wait, you got you, all of a sudden you guys are just acting dumb for no reason. It's like, what are you doing? And as much as I would like to make more, like what's stopping me is that I have to either find a replacement or just find a workaround, because people are like, oh, why don't you just get someone told me, oh, why don't you get it done by? Zazzle or whatever. I'm like, yo, if I go to Zazzle, the quality's gonna is gonna is gonna nose that. <laughs> the yeah. quality's gonna nose that because my, well, that's that's the reason why people like my stuff, my 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 clothing a lot because of the quality. Right. Because uh, I don't know if you ever bought a hoodie from me or you ever seen the hoodies, but the I've quality, seen the hoodies, yeah. The, the quality's thick. yes. Mm-hmm. Like the hoodie I have, the hoodies I wear. Mm-hmm. I don't need to, you don't need a jacket for the winter. You really don't. You'll oh, be wow. sweating. That's how good they are. Like mm-hmm. that's why. Like I don't know if you know this girl. She's a YouTuber actually. <laughs> I don't know if you heard of her. Uh, uh, Sun Pie. She used to be called Sun Bookish, but she's just she's mm-hmm. just British girl. Um, yeah, Sun Pie. S U N P I. Uh, mm-hmm. she uh she's a friend of mine that I know. Um, and she always wears my stuff. She always wears my hoodie. But she's always wearing it because it's so comfortable. Yeah. So it's like yeah. I want I want to make more, but I can't. So that that's my excuse. That's it's not excusable. Yeah, I can't because you know my factory is giving me problems, and I want to make more, but but also I have other priorities that are come first, like you know um you know, you know money for food and mm-hmm. bills and you know I'm not a big company, but if I was a big company, yeah, that's my excuse. Yeah, so, I mean, but the... for them, it's like you don't have an excuse. Right, you're a big company, you have <laughs> millions of dollars, like. Put someone on this for like two weeks. <laughs> like, make <it laughs> yeah, a, exactly. Call it a day. Like, and fans have already like like there are fans who've like like you said like they've already um translated everything. Yeah, they did. They did. And, so like, it's it's easy to get into. Right. Like, pay them for their dub or you know whatever or steal it. I don't care. <laughs> they're, they're, I'm, I'm looking at the color pop. I'm looking at the color pop. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And these are the ones that sold out. Yeah, it sold out like four different times. Like everything, like they've been doing a lot of collaborations this year, which is getting me really hopeful because they released a movie too um, last month and they're releasing part two this month. Um, so I feel like oh, they're doing wait, a lot wait, of stuff. Wait. Mm-hmm. wait, the movie's out already? The first part? In Japan. Oh, I, I, know it got, I know it was Japan, but I know it got delayed for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, part one came out last month and then part two's about to come oh. out, uh, I think, on in a, this in February. Oh snap! I didn't know the part. The, the first yeah. part already. Yeah, because uh, that movie was in, was in the works for a long time. Yeah, they kept pushing it back too because of COVID. But yeah, they put it out oh. in um, in Japan, and then there's rumors that it's gonna come out on Netflix. And um, because someone, oh. one of the like voice actors, 
like took a picture of himself and like on the screen behind him it had like um astro girl like netflix or something and then someone else found like um some sheet where they were like oh sailor moon and they had in parentheses like astro girl as like the the Mm, fake name so people are like okay netflix like maybe it's coming oh snap oh i have a question for you Mm -hmm. um what's your take on sailor moon crystal i'm mixed on it so i like that it's closer to the manga i really didn't like the artwork when it started out and I'm still kind of mixed on the artwork. I feel like they also like didn't. What I really loved about the '90s version is how an- this is gonna sound weird, but how animated it was. Just like the facial expressions, and like it was kind of like goofy and silly, and it wasn't afraid to just be like outrageous. Mm-hmm. And I feel like with Crystal, they really just took away a lot of that personality, and like the colors just seem duller, and like the animation is stiffer. Mm, and I'm just okay. I'm mixed on, but I do really like like it is more serious and that's closer to like how the manga is, and I do like that. And especially like now there are things that were in the manga that we'd never seen animated, so I'm really excited to see those things happen. I do re- I'm really excited for the movie though. I think like this is the best the animation has looked since Crystal came out, and okay. so I feel like they're getting closer and closer to something that's better so i'm really excited what they do for the final um so now they're up to season three of sailor moon of the original 90s okay Okay. oh actually no sorry season four of the 90s yeah i'm looking at the poster for the next movie it does Mm -hmm. it does look really good though yeah i like when i saw the trailer i was like okay all right Okay, I gotta look at the trailer. Yeah, okay, I'm looking at the I'm on, I'm looking at the the poster for the first movie that dropped. This was yeah, January eighth, mm-hmm. and then and then um, looking it's called it's Sailor Moon Eternal. Right. Yeah, it looks closer to the what the original anime looked like. Yeah, so oh. I think they brought back someone. I forgot who it was, but someone who worked on the original is working on it now, and I think that's a, a re- reason one of the reasons why it's gotten so much better. Okay. Okay. Um, because yeah. I was thinking about getting into Crystal. I was because I'm like, um, okay. Because I was thinking about rewatching the old one. Should I just watch Crystal and then watch the old one, or should I watch the old one and then Crystal? Um, hmm, I would say the old one. Okay. But the good thing about Crystal though is that it's so much shorter. Um, right. I know the oh, 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 yeah hmm. the other one was like two hundred. Yeah, it's two hundred episodes. Crystal, I think, is like up to like. 30 something now like it's probably gonna cap at like 60 maybe well this movie that came out is basically them so they put instead of making season four they just made it into two movies are they gonna make more episodes with it or is just a movie that's it if they're gonna continue there's one there's one final season so i think so i think so i think they're gonna do one more i don't know if they're gonna do another movie or another season but Okay. Yeah. Hey, no, I, I'm just. I, I've been paying attention. I'm sorry cause with the, yeah. with, the with, with, with what they've been doing. Yeah, is. Um, uh, I just. I knew about the movie though, but uh, and I know people were mixed on the uh, on the new series. Yeah. Just into art style. Um, that was really sad. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I'm. I'm more. I am curious still though. Um, yeah. So I'm looking at the images right now from the crystal. And, yeah. Um, it's very close to the manga, but then. Um, the old one does look really good though too. Mm-hmm. Like a certain charm about it. Uh, right. Especially with like around the time it came out, because um, you know a lot a lot of cell, you know back then was done on cells animation. Right. And you know it was painstakingly done. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I get why everything is digital now because it's it's a lot more, you know, less time consuming. I mean, you, you've seen those videos when they're showing them. Oh, yeah. The, yeah it, 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 the process is insane. Stats. And, um, mm-hmm. and check this out, too. Like, there's an area, there's a, there's a, part, there's a, there's a part in, in Tokyo, a place in Tokyo called um, Nakano, right? Mm-hmm. And it's Nakano train station. And there's, uh, when you walk out the station, there's a plaza. Um, well, it's not really a plaza. It's just called a plaza. It's like a plaza, like in America, but, you know, it's an area. And um, I don't know if you heard about this store, but it's like a infamous store for having a lot of like cool anime books and, and merchandise. It's called Mandrake. Have you heard of it? That sounds familiar, but I don't, I don't 
think right. so. Look up, look up, Man, look up, Mandrake and Nakano. N A K O N O. Nakano. Yeah. N A K O N O. Mhm. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I'm bringing it up because when I was there, I, I've been there a few times, and um, oh, that's huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, and there's it's like two floors, and also there's an arcade there too, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I'm bringing it up because when you when you go there, you could buy like some cell or like you know oh, game yeah. the, do the drawings over there. That's like and, one of my like I want to get a bunch of Sailor Moon cells. Yeah, yeah, and and I did see Sailor Moon cells there. Um, they're expensive. They're, they're expensive. yeah, because you know they're the original and stuff. But um, like there's some that's really cheap. But it's for, if it's for like a popular, like a Sailor Moon or like a Dragon Ball Z or a Bebop, mm-hmm. it's gonna it's gonna be a couple hundred dollars. But it, it is really nice though. Yeah. They are really nice, and um, I did I did remember seeing a lot of those over there. Uh, all types of anime though, but they're all, you can get them on they're on eBay too though. Um, because I I, I mm-hmm. have been looking, um, I have been looking for some cells that I wanted to buy. I haven't bought any yet. Um, um anime cells. But I, I wanted to get some from some of my favorite uh, anime, you know, movies or series or whatever. Uh, I'm not gonna go crazy because someone says, "Yo, once you start, you're gonna go crazy." Yeah, you know, yeah that's so, the hard thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I definitely want a Bebop cell. Ooh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm gonna get one. Too. I'm gonna yeah. get one. I'm Do gonna, it. Like, mark my words. I'm gonna get one. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a nice spike cell. Trust me on that. I'm gonna oh. get it. I love Bebop I'm, so much. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let me not get on that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this. I, I don't want to get too off us topic of mm-hmm. Sailor Moon, but I will say this though. Um, I know people love uh, Watanabe and stuff. Mm-hmm. However, in my opinion, I think his most, I think his best anime is Space Dandy. You know, I still haven't watched Space Dandy. Oh my heart! I know. I remember when it came out. I was like, I need to watch this. And then for some reason, like. I think from, I don't know if it was a trailer I saw, and I was like, this just seems too different. And I just wasn't, I don't okay. know. And I, do but have, I do need to watch it. Do you have Hulu or Funimation? I have both. Okay, I'd say watch it on Funimation. Okay. Um, because uh, on Hulu, is the, the, for some reason, it's 720p. So on, watch okay. it on Funimation since it's uh, 1080p. I'll move it to the so, top of the list. Yeah. So I, I'll tell you this. This is my opinion. I, I'm not saying... I'm the right person, but this is just my opinion. I believe that is Watanabe's best anime series. That is saying a lot, man. But all right, I'm a, I'm gonna watch it. And um, it's actually my sister mm-hmm. that got me to that conclusion. Because my sister, oh, she loves she loves she she loves Cowboy Bebop. Mm-hmm. She loves um. She, had, well, she, she, don't like, she doesn't love shampoo. She likes. Oh. She's like, oh, it's okay. Mm-hmm. She's not. She's not too crazy about shampoo. But when it comes to space dandy, she that's one of that's hands down one of her favorite all time favorite animes. And I have oh. to I have to agree with her because, and and I'll tell you why because when you watch it, it's twenty six episodes, right? Mm-hmm. When you watch it, and I know you might you might be turned off by it because there's a lot of offbeat stuff that goes on. I implore you, just at least watch to the very end, because okay. all of it will make sense at the end. All right. And I'm yeah, kinda... I feel like, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I just I think when I first saw it, I was just expect I was like, this is the creative cowboy bebop, you know, I just right, expected right, to see that, right, and it was right. just so different that it just threw me off, and I never went back to it. Mm-hmm. But I do think I could enjoy it because like there's a lot of other offbeat stuff that I like. Yeah. And so I think I'll like it. I just never went back to it. Yeah, so I'm going to watch it. You said you like Izuken, so. Yeah, I love Keep Your Hands Off by Izuken. Right. I so that, if you say you like that and you see how creative mm-hmm. they were with that, then mm-hmm. you should be able to. You, then I think, I believe you'll understand Space Daddy. But I just, mm-hmm. please, please, I implore you, watch it to the very end. And, yeah, I, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of yeah. giving you a spoiler by saying it'll it'll make sense at the end. I kind of am, but I'm I'm kind of not. But okay. just watch to the very end, and you'll be like, okay, no, okay, now it makes sense. Mm, all right, it's going, okay. yeah, because the the payoff 
the payoff is so big. It's a it's a mm-hmm. great payoff. Everything, so, yeah, mm-hmm. it comes full circle. It pays. It's like, oh, <laughs> and then and then when the credits roll, watch for the very end of the credits. Okay, all right. On the last yeah, on, yeah, on the last nice. episode, yeah, and no, no, take your time whenever you want to watch it. But when you get around, hit me up and tell me and tell me your mm-hmm. thoughts. And if I if I was wrong, I'll apologize to you. I was yeah. like, yeah. Right. I was like, I'm sorry for wasting 13 hours of your life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna watch it this month for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think this is yeah. one episode that's very adorable that I think you really, really love. No, oh, I do love adorable episodes. Yeah, it's a very adorable episode. I don't want to say it. You, you'll know what I'm yeah. talking about when you see it. Okay, because I also really loved um. What's that other anime? Oh gosh, um, uh, what is it? Dragon Maid. Oh, oh yeah, my sister put me on a dragon's maid. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah I you, you know it's getting a season. Miss Kobayashi's two. dragon's maid. Yeah, dragon maid. Yeah, yeah Miss Kobayashi's dragon maid. Yeah, oh, uh, you know you're getting a season. I love two. that one. Yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like I'll probably like it. I thought it was funny how it got like right after I saw the the the, the first season, the second mm-hmm. season was announced, and and mind you, the first season was out for a while. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm excited for that. Though. I am excited. Um, I have to wait a minute. Shout out to Kyoto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, after what happened with them, you know, I'm glad to see they're they're getting back on their feet again. Me too. Yeah. yeah. After that, that the fire, that was, that was really bad. That was, that was so so sad. Yeah, um, I'm happy to see them. Yeah. Back too. Yeah, but um, but yeah, like I was saying with Sailor Moon, um, mm-hmm. I'll check out Crystal and um, mm-hmm. I'll take a I'll take a jab at it. Um, oh, what's what's your favorite Sailor Moon movie? My favorite Sailor Moon movie? Yeah. Ooh, that's hard. Um, I think Hearts and Ice, which is Sailor Moon S, the S, movie. Okay. Yeah, I think that one is it. Like, I love Promise of a Rose. Um, it definitely like has a lot of like the themes are really good, and it has like a lot of emotions. And I love the ending. Mm-hmm. But I think Hearts and Ice just has the best story overall. Like, you I get think... a little bit more of Luna and yeah. I think yeah. is that is that the one with the mm-hmm. kids that got manipulated? No, that's that um, Super S. That's, Super that's S. That's the um, okay. the one after, yeah. Uh, I know that one was good too. Okay, yeah, I did like. I think that's my favorite one or R. Yeah. Black Dream Hole. Or I think it's what's R called again? Promise of a Rose. That's R. Okay, yeah, that that was good because yeah. that, that had a lot of action in that mm-hmm. one. From what I remember. Yeah, that one had a lot. Of, like, like Sarah got, Jupiter was getting it in. Yeah. I feel I, I feel so bad because it's been years since I've seen these. I'm just basing it off of my memory from the. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to find the movies a little bit more. I mean, now I think I think they've they've all been um redubbed. Yeah, I think they're available for DVD now, but they're kind of pricey. But yeah, oh, they are. But, um, a little bit. I think. Like, I mean, like maybe like seventy. I think maybe a little bit 70? cheaper. Seventy. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong thing. I know the seasons are like seventy, but the movies yeah. might be a little cheaper. Yeah, I know mm-hmm. Viz. I know Viz publishes them. Yeah. 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 Shout out to Viz. Yeah. Viz has been helping me a lot with the podcast too, so that's been really nice. Really? Yeah, just like connecting me with some of the voice actors. Voice that is um, cool. Of the new dub. Yeah, they've been really nice. They've been great. So shout out to them. Oh, wow. Yeah. Shout out to Viz for the assist. Yeah, they've been so helpful. Especially even before I launched, like before Sweetie came on, like, you know, just like, just straight up, just like, yeah, sure, I'll help you out. This is cool. <laughs> oh, that is that is flipping dope, yo. Yeah. Um. Okay. I want to ask you though. Um. Who's your favorite Sailor Scout? I didn't ask you that. Oh, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, normally I would say someone like Amy because she's blue like Sonic. <laughs> I love how it goes back to Sonic. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But that's a cop out. So if I had mm-hmm. to choose. It's a tough one, actually. If I had to choose in terms of, I would say between, I would say between Mars and Jupiter. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, but Sailor Venus got swag, though. True. Very true. Because she's from the video game? Yeah. The glasses and everything. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Damn. <laughs> uh... It's hard. That's a tough one. <laughs> um, I'd say Venus then. Okay. Venus got the swag and she got her own video game. She's Sailor V. Mm, true. I, I'll, I'll give it to her. 
because I thought it was funny how she played her in the arcades. Yeah. <laughs> she played her in the arcades. Um, actually, uh, I did get they did inspire me for some. I did take some inspiration from Sailor Moon, um, mm-hmm. with Inez for for TF. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I, oh, it's not. It hasn't shown in the comic yet, but she's not a good student. Ah. And okay. And um, she likes playing at the arcades a lot. Oh, that's cool. Because, right, yeah, I definitely, Serena. yeah, I definitely, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm, the crybaby part, yeah, she, she doesn't mm-hmm. have that part, like the whole, mm-hmm. you know, meatball head and stuff, <laughs> they used to call it, do they call <laughs> yeah. it that in the dub meatball head? Um, they call her dumpling head. Oh, that makes more sense. translation, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. See? Yeah, the, See? they I'm, changed it. <laughs> interesting, dumpling uh-huh. head, it does like a yep. dumpling. It does, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, so, mm-hmm. so yeah, with with her, um, mm-hmm. uh, around the time because Tef Teflon, I don't know if people know this, but it takes place in in the mid nineties, mm-hmm. and um, you know when arcades were still you know out and about. So, right. uh, there was a big arcade scene in New York back then. Um, I'm sure people know about Chinatown Fair or heard of Chinatown Fair, but um. I don't know if it's still there, but there was a big arcade, huge arcade in, um, I don't know if it's still there, but it was in Coney, oh. Coney Island. What what happened? What? Oh, wait, never mind. No, I was thinking of one. There's one in Chinatown that I know of. I thought that's what you're going with, but I don't know the one in Coney Island. I think that's Chinatown Ferry you're talking about, is it? Yeah. 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 Oh, no, no, I'm not talking about that, but there's, there was one, in, a big one in Coney Island. Um, mm. I went there back when I was, I was very small. I was, I must, this was like around 94. I must have been about eight years old, but there's a big arcade there. Um, and you know, obviously that arcade is one of my grandma's house in Queens where, uh, it was a pizza parlor and it had an arcade, you know, it had an arcade cabinet there for, uh, I, f- I think it was either X-Men versus Street Fighter or Marvel superheroes versus Street Fighter. Um, but yeah, I definitely wanted to put like, like hopefully, you know, fingers crossed if, if, if I ever get an anime series, um, like. I'm definitely going to put that into the anime series. Uh, but I, I got to find a way to put it in the comics. I, I definitely have to have a scene where she's doing that at the, she's at an arcade or whatever. And she's playing at, you know, like what Sailor Moon does. Like, you know, she, she, when she gets out of school, she goes to the arcade or she's at a pizza mm-hmm. bar. She's at an arcade or whatever. I definitely want to have a scene like that. I definitely, I'll, I'll see if I can do it in a comic actually. Yay. Yeah. I'll see if I can do it in a comic first. So I can be like, Hey, this is in the, in the comic first before it became in the anime. I mean, if, if if that ever happens, that is. right? Yeah, yeah that would be so cool. I love that. Yeah, and, and to anyone listening, if you're any TF fans listening, I hope um, you guys keep hitting me up, asking me about an anime. Like, there's no anime. Please stop asking me. <laughs> when, if if there is one, trust me, I will tell. I yeah. will. I will put that out there. And please, could you please tell them too as well? Like. It, it, <laughs> to stop harassing Stefan. <laughs> please, please, because I get I get messages all the time. Please. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they're they're people it's not are, gonna work are very though. Excited, yeah. No, I I, I understand, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. and I don't want to sound discouraging. I don't want to sound mean or discouraging, but you you what you're asking me to do is a very tall or trying to attempt. And I'm, I'm mm-hmm. don't don't get it wrong. Don't, I don't want people to think I'm not trying. I am. I I've tried and I've had close calls. Um, and I, some people, you know, I got hit, COVID messed everything up. You know, I was mm. close and I got dropped by everybody because of COVID. And I, I talked about it. Yeah. I talked mm-hmm. about it in an interview, uh, with, uh, with CBR and mm. I mentioned, oh, yeah. yeah, I mentioned, I didn't put, I, you know, I'm not naming names, but mm-hmm. I mentioned I was dealing with some really, really big people and COVID happened and they had no choice but to just, you know, drop everything because mm-hmm. of just what what happened so it was in the works but then so now i have to like figure out i'm i'm still trying we're all trying to figure out you know every, you know so but i don't feel too bad because it's like okay everyone else is failing too so i don't feel as bad so because of covid yeah. so i don't feel Listen, too it's, bad it's rough out here for everybody <laughs> yeah it's rough out here so okay i'm not yeah. i'm not that big of a failure yeah. you know so everyone else is failing oh you got an f2 oh good okay <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's you how know I, that is a good feeling, actually. No, nah, it's a great feeling. Like, oh, you it just brought oh, me back. It's oh, like, majority oh, of like, oh, the whole class failed. Cool. Oh, awesome! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that stupid. <laughs> right, it's not just me. Right. Oh, oh, thank God, they all got S two. Mm-hmm. 
it wasn't just me. Um, yeah. yeah, but uh, but the but I'm just trying to like let people understand like how tall of an order that is. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, things are you know things are becoming a lot better for for black artists, writers, creators, producers, whatever. But uh, you have to understand. Um, if you want to get technical, if you want to, I'm not even get technical. Just, just, just put out the facts. There's only one anime series that exists that was created by a black person, and that's Cannon Busters. Cannon Busters? Mm. Yes, that's Cannon wow. Busters. So that, like, I think I, mean, I don't know if it makes sense what I'm saying, but. So you, wait, do you not consider Boondocks and um, no, Afro no. Samurai? Okay. Well, Afro Samurai, Afro Samurai wasn't created by a black person. It was created by a Japanese person. Oh, you're right. Inspired yeah. by hip hop. You're right. Right. So I always forget because like right. RZA was involved and uh, right. Samuel Jackson. Yes, yes. Samuel so, Jackson what? was yeah. a producer on the show and right. you know, voice actor, but it was not. It was not the manga series. It was created by uh, somebody. Um, Oh, actually, he's a fan of TF2, actually, the creator of... Oh, yay! Yeah, Fat John told me. <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm messing up his name. But I know Fat John calls him Bob, for short. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I gotta Google that. I'm, I'm really bad. My memory is terrible. Yeah, mine's um, doing no worries. Yeah, so... Um, but that was created by a Japanese manga artist, uh, Takashi Okazaki. But, or, or, or they call him Bob, for short. Uh, that's, what, that's what Fat John calls him. Uh, Bob, mm-hmm. but um, Takashi Okazaki, um, he was a he was a huge he's a huge fan of hip hop culture, hip hop and black culture, and Makes sense. yo yo all all praise to him, he's dope, but uh, that was created by a Japanese person inspired by black culture, mm-hmm. right? And I know people like to say Avatar, and I, people can get mad at me, but I'm just I'm just giving you straight I'm just giving you straight facts. Mm-hmm. People get mad at people can get mad at me, but I don't care. It's just facts. But people like to say, "Oh, uh, Boondocks is an anime, or or Avatar is an anime." It's like, no, it is anime inspired, mm-hmm. not anime, because people like to say what defines an anime. Um, and I don't like. I'm a type of person. I'm by the books. I go by, hey, this is a straight facts. You know, Whether you like it or not. Sorry, that's a straight facts. If you get an F, you get an F. I'm not curbing your grade. So that's how I look at it. <laughs> because they didn't do that for me when I was a kid. So <laughs> I'm not gonna do it for y'all. So but this is the this is I'll just say it this way. This is how I look at it as far as like as far as anime goes. Um matter of fact, I gotta look at this message because I was talking to Henry about this on 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 a while back. Henry Thurlow, you know, from D Art Stagio. Um mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was talking. I gotta look for the. Give me. A, I'm sorry. Give me one second. Yeah. Because I actually, he actually, I was talking to him. I was like breaking it down because I don't know if you know they have YouTube videos where they talk about. Uh, they talk yeah, about the uh, process and stuff. Yeah, the anime industry and whatnot. Yeah. Um, shout out and, to them. Shout out to Arthel. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. I was just talking to Arthel a while back. Yeah. Um, he was asking me how's how's everything with TF and stuff, and I said, mm-hmm. oh, you know, same old, same old, failing. <laughs> um. But I'm sorry, I'm just looking for the message real quick because mm-hmm. we talk a well, lot. I know, like anime originally was Japanese animation, then it was like Jap anime, and then it just became anime. Yeah, when they were bringing mm-hmm. like in like like when I was a kid, when Akira mm-hmm. like Akira was a, everyone was talking about Akira when I was like nine years, just like in 1995. Mm-hmm. So I was about nine years old at the time. I was nine years old at the time, but I remember seeing the commercials for Akira, um, and this is around the time you know. When Sailor Moon was getting in the swing of things, mm. and uh, Sailor Moon had an easier time getting popular versus Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, because when Dragon Ball came out, um, I didn't hear about it. It was my cousin that put me onto it, um, but it had a lot of trouble catching on, and they only did thirteen episodes dubbed. They only they only dubbed the thirteen first thirteen episodes, and then that was it. And maybe like mm-hmm. and like a like a like I think the first movie. One of the first movies, and that was it. And then they just they said, "Okay, this doesn't work. We're gonna move on. We're gonna try Dragon Ball Z, you know, the Funimation at the time." So they did the 52 episodes that we all know and love, you know, the, the ocean dub. 
and um, that was still having a hard time too because like, like with Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, they were playing that Saturday mornings at five in the morning. I remember that. I remember that because I used to wake up to watch some of those episodes back then. Mm -hmm. in Saturday morning, because when I was a kid, Saturday morning, I woke up at five in the morning because I knew certain cartoons would only play at that time, right. and that car that didn't catch on. And then they tried Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. When I was in Maryland, I'm just talking about my experience in Maryland. They were playing it on Saturday, like around 11. I think it was around 11 a.m. on UPN. Mm -hmm. So that's when I would catch it. Right. At the time, but now, uh, but that did catch on, but it had a much harder time than Sailor Moon did, because Sailor Moon was played early in the morning on weekdays. And then later on in the afternoons at 4 p.m. on on Tsunami. No, no, no. And before it was Tsunami, it was uh, oh. it was WB, the mm -hmm. W in Maryland. I'm talking about oh, Maryland. So WB was playing it in the afternoon too. Yes, at 4 p.m. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, because you know, I was eight. And this is '94 at the time. That's how I knew. Um, yeah. No, I knew they played right. it in the mornings. Right. They did play in the morning. I didn't know they played it in the afternoon too. Yeah, at 4 p.m. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I I remember because I I used to watch it and I actually stopped watching Sailor Moon for about a year. Mm -hmm. uh, I got scared of anime after a while because <laughs> because when I was about nine years old, um, mm -hmm. this is like Christmas '95. I went to my cousin's. Uh, he had moved to Long Island or whatever, but I was still living in Maryland. But I still come to New York to, to visit, mm -hmm. and um, he was. Uh, they were watching it was him and my other cousins, and um, they were watching an anime called Diver. I don't know if you ever heard of Giver, but mm -hmm. <laughs> Giver is a very brutal anime. I'm talking about the, the original anime adaptation at the time that came out. It came out in '89 as a uh, different several OVAs. It was okay. about twelve altogether. So, um, and they had an OVA special like uh, of a, a, a single OVA, which was Giver Out of Control, which had a female Giver, but it is very gory. And oh, I, see I saw okay. him getting ripped to shreds and all that stuff. And I said, oh, my God, I didn't know cartoons could be that nasty. <laughs> and it spooked me. Yeah. To the point that I stopped watching anime for like about a year. So every time I see Sailor Moon turn on, I get scared and turn on the TV or change the channel. I was That's that. fair. Because you don't know like what like what's going to end up being like this and what's right, not. Right, right. And then ironically, he ended up... Uh, he ended up introducing me to Dragon Ball because afterwards he was playing an old recording that he would tape Saturday mornings of Dragon Ball. And that's mm -hmm. how I found out about Dragon Ball. But ironically, I ended up stop watching watching anime because I got scared. I thought all oh, anime was like that after a while. Um, <laughs> you were heart, completely wrong. <laughs> my heart was beating. I was like, wow. Yeah. Uh, but back to what I was saying about the anime and anime inspired. So um, this is what I was... Cause, uh, Arthel and them were talking about this in one of their videos on YouTube. Um, and they were talking about anime, anime, whatever, whatever. Um, so I said, okay, this is what I said to him. Um, I said, I saw your guys' video on the definition of anime. I usually look at it as something that has the majority of production slash creation done in Japan, regardless of whether the people involved aren't all Japanese natives. And then I said, series like Avatar, Boondocks, and Castlevania... I consider them to be more anime inspired than that of an actual anime. Whereas shows like DuckTales, Batman the Animated Series, Tiny Toons, etc. weren't just animated in Japan, but South Korea and Taiwan too. That was that was created and led by an American company, which makes them cartoons. Because, I don't know if you know this, or the, your the audience mm -hmm. knows this, but um, like DuckTales, Batman the Animated Series, and Tiny Toons was animated by TMS. Entertainment, I didn't know right? That. Yes, mm -hmm. and but not all the episodes were done by them. Mm -hmm. They were done by they were done by them along with a couple other studios in America, South Korea, and Taiwan. So that doesn't necessarily oh, the oh, that's anime. It's like, no, not necessarily because it was an amalgamation of all these companies. And it was led by Warner Brothers, which is an American mm -hmm. company, and they were choosing which ones to do. But the most expensive episodes were done by TMS. And you can tell by the quality. If you go on YouTube, they break the whole thing down. Hmm. You know? I'm gonna check yeah. that out. I'm gonna try so, to find that link and put it in the I'll put it in the uh, description below for anybody who right, wants to watch it. Right. So that's what I mean by that. So in the in the real sense, the only mm -hmm. black anime 
that's out there. It's not Boondock that's anime inspired because that was animated in South Korea by several mm-hmm. different South Korean studios where the pre-production was done in um in America. You know, scripts, uh, scripts, storyboards, and and some voice work. Mm-hmm. Uh, it all depends. Sometimes they do it before, sometimes it's after. It just depends on which the, you know whoever's producing it, whatever. Um, yeah. It varies, but um, most of that was done by South. That was done by South Korean studios. Uh, and as far as how Boondocks got its anime look or anime style, it was derived from it was it was it was derived from this artist called uh, Sung Young Kim. Mm-hmm. Sung Young Kim is the reason why the Boondocks looks the way it looks. As like that's why it looks like an anime. Uh, you guys should follow him on IG. He he, he his IG. Uh, he he got so many followers out of nowhere. Like one minute he had 10k, now he got like over 100k. I'm like, man, wow. Yeah, I'd be having him <laughs> like that. Yeah, I talked to him nice. a few times actually. He's really nice. Yeah. He's really Aaron nice. Magruder also said that he wanted it to look like an anime because he didn't want it like I forgot the artist of The Simpsons, but basically like, he kind of set the standard for what adult animation looks like, and he yes, wanted yes, yes, you know, a different look. And yeah. uh, anime would be a really good way to do that. Yes, yes. Because a lot of adult anim- animation, you know, oh, this is adult animation. It's always crude. And it's like, why, why mm-hmm. does it always have to be crude? Right. You know, why can't it be more like Boondocks or like Spawn? You know, Spawn mm-hmm. Spawn was an adult animated series. And it was it was nice. It was animated nicely. Right. And it didn't have to look like a like something that's crude. Like, I hate that. I hate that. What are you going to do with adult animation? It looks like, mm-hmm. it looks like crayons, you know? <laughs> I hate that. It's like we can't do better, but, right? Yeah, but that's I, I know I'm I know I'm getting all nerdy and stuff, and I'm you know whatever. Yeah, this is but, the right place, no worries. Okay, yeah, you know, but that's that's the way I look at it. Like something, mm-hmm. so because people like to say, oh, it's, it's, it's made by Japanese for Japanese. Mm, uh, okay, but you have to understand this too. That like, and this has been this isn't just recently. This has been going on for for decades. There's a lot of other nationalities that work in the anime industry. A lot mm-hmm. of them, a lot of them are French. A lot yeah. of them are French artists and animators. A lot of them are French. There's a bunch that's German. There's a bunch that's like American. Look at Arthel and Henry. Look, there's mm-hmm. they're from all over the world. Like there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of Koreans too. Yeah, a lot of Korean, yeah, a lot of Chinese. Serious. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. Korean, Chinese, Taiwanese, Filipino. It doesn't matter. Like. It's not just all Japanese. Yes, it's led by a Japanese director. It could be led by a Japanese director. You know, I'm not saying it's like they're all like all mixed in those studios, but I'm just saying there's not you know, you know there's, there's there's other nationalities that work in the anime industry. So if you want to be so if people are saying that oh made by Japanese for Japanese, you're, you're still wrong mm-hmm. <laughs> in a sense because it's always been like that. Um, maybe not as much as it was back then, but it's it's more so now than it was back then. But it's still the same. You know, that, if that makes sense, what I'm saying. Yeah, no, it does. Right, right. It definitely you know, does. And, oh. and I'm saying this because I know a lot of people who are French, who work in the anime industry, who are German, who are Russian, who are uh, 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 American, you know, black, <laughs> African, all types. Yeah. You know? I feel like it's mostly Americans do get caught up on that definition. And I might be wrong, but I feel yeah, like no, yeah, it's yeah. mostly for, us. For the most part. Like, this is anime. This is an anime. And this is mm, like, no, it's yeah. anime inspired, I'd say. Yeah. And, nothing is, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. But if you're going to, but you know what it is? Uh, Netflix mm-hmm. kind of started, kind of kind of made it up, made it too. But it's only net, like, they'll call Castlevania mm-hmm. a Netflix anime series. Right. Um, But no, it's, I mean, yeah, some of it was anime in Korea. Mm-hmm. I was actually visiting a studio when they were working on the first season of Castlevania. It was a uh, Moi film. Nice. Yeah, this is back. Powerhouse did. It. Yeah, this was. Uh, yeah. yeah, this was this was back in 2016. Moi mm-hmm. film does the overseas animation for Castlevania. Um, oh. Yeah. Um, and they worked on the Boondocks too. You know, nice. I met I met I met one of the. Uh, I have a friend over there who's a Korean animator. He works on a lot of the stuff. Uh, a lot of those series, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I follow him on. I don't follow, I'm not gonna say his name, but <laughs> so, you know, kind of. Sometimes he posts stuff you're not supposed to be posting. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember he posted something like, because he does like he's a key animator and a director, mm-hmm. and he'll be showing, he'll be like posting his key frames, mm-hmm. like on his IG page. And this this shit is not supposed to be known until like a year or two later. Oh my god! <laughs> but he doesn't have that many followers, so it's like, oh, 
It doesn't so, matter. Right, right. But I'm like, yeah. oh, maybe we should have You got a lot of followers. I know it, though. I'm nosy, but don't go by me. I'm nosy, though. I'm nosy as shit. Mm-hmm. Though, you know, but, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, uh, I, I met him through a, a friend of mine, and then we ended up visiting him because he told him he, we, were, we, were in, we were in Korea, in Seoul, and then he wanted to meet up with us and stuff. He didn't speak a lick of English. He used a translator and everything. And um, mm-hmm. it was cool. It was fun. It was fun. And, and they, they have this big wall where uh, they have people that, that uh, it's actually Shoshan. He was there too. They one of his, mm-hmm. uh, what's the thing called again? The Soul Sessions? Where oh, he, yeah, yeah. He drew a picture of Black Dynamite and signed. Um, and it had that, that wall was still there, like where you take a magic marker and just draw or whatever. Yeah. I didn't do anything, though. I, I, I didn't think I was worthy. So I didn't. You should have did it. You're I worthy. I know. I could come back. <laughs> yeah. Come back well, I, I mean, I can't not now, you know, COVID. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, I want to yeah, yeah. ask you because you, yeah. you've, you've talked a little bit about Teflon Funk, but what is what is it about? Tell the people what it's about. Oh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a series about a young girl. Um, She's from Queensbridge, and um, she runs into someone that, you know, turns her life upside down, for better or for worse. And um, as as the story goes, we see that there's there's, there's more to it than, than, than what we think it is. And we see that there's a lot more folks that are connected within uh, this Teflon funk than we think. And, you know, uh, as we go down a rabbit hole... We, you know, a lot of plot twists here and there. Uh, I don't want to spoil it. Because uh, mm-hmm. uh, for the people that have read the comic already, read all the issues, um, I do have some, there is some artwork out there that we have of of, of some of the plot twists. Um, and I would like to have more done. You know, I, you know, I would like to do more and uh, David would like to do more too, but we, uh, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. So I can't yeah. really put that out there, but. I do have, uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil it. I really just don't. Um, and I, I, I mean, I like the story. <laughs> I yeah, like the story. I love it. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. And so Inez is the young girl. Gabriel is the person who may or may not be getting her into like, yeah. into her life for better or worse. And you have Cameron and Giselle. And I believe Cameron's the cop. Cameron's the cop, yeah. She's yeah. A, she's a, she's a, uh, you know, 24 year old cop mm-hmm. um and she's she's investigating and she's trying to look for gabriel and you're like what what's going on and right obviously i can't explain why because if i do i'm gonna spoil it yeah and then we, but we just find out how they're all linked together each character's from a, a different borough um inez is from queens uh gabriel's from queens brooklyn Bird. yeah <laughs> and um you know giselle's from um she's from washington heights manhattan and uh you know, cameras from the Bronx. Um, and then you see they're all from different parts of the city and they all come together for this one goal. And I don't want to leave, I'll just leave it at that. Mm-hmm. And um, funny thing too is that, I mean, I will say this, the previous partners I was working with before I got dropped, um, they wanted me to change the narrative because they basically wanted me to make it all about, all about um, Inez and her upbringing mm. and um i mean i wasn't happy with that but i you know i said eh. i had to I understood hey this is how if this is to make make it happen then so be it so i was i was i was willing to you know uh make certain sacrifices just for the sake of getting it out there mm. but um i'm kind of glad it didn't work out because a lot of <laughs> a lot of things i wanted to do I, w- I wouldn't be able to do if i had gone with that narrative so i'm, I'm glad mm. but because they wanted to make her the main character and then the other characters sub characters. Mm. Which I wasn't Yeah, it'd be different. Yeah, yeah. It was it was everything from her perspective and just her narrating and I, I really didn't like that because I'm like they're all the main characters. Which is like I mean and like you read the comic, you see everything from their each of their different yeah. perspectives. It's not just like so I was like, So I did all this world building for nothing? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I was so mad if that happened because I'm still like, I want to know how they're all connected and like, if, we, yeah, if I don't figure that yeah. out, I'm gonna be very sad. Right. And, well, yeah. And, yeah. And um, at the time when I was dealing with these people, like I, because they told me to put the just put some summaries for episodes or whatever, and mm-hmm. you know, I had, I mean, I'm not really spoiling anything, um, 
but I have certain parts dedicated to certain characters. I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And and their backgrounds and just help bring things full circle and kind of like threw that out the window. So, so it, uh, uh, shout out to COVID. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the first shout out COVID has gotten <laughs> since it started. Well, something, at least but yeah, something. But I mean, there's been pros and cons. Came, yeah, yeah. Something good came from that. I'll say that. But yeah. But I, I mean, to be honest, I wasn't very happy about that. But I, mm-hmm. but I understood like, hey, you know, tit for tat, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta roll with. But um, yeah, the thing mm-hmm. about Hollywood is that they want to get into it, but they don't fully understand, you know. Because mm-hmm. when I was trying to like explain the story to them, like they had a hard time comprehending, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of anime, what they'll do, they'll like, they don't have to answer all the questions. It's like, yo, you come to your own conclusion. And I, right. I like that type of storytelling because that's where people keep debating. Like like how in Bebop, people still think, oh, did Spike die? They didn't show him die. Right. He showed him lying down. He may be unconscious. Blah, blah, blah. So mm-hmm. people are like, hey, uh, did he die? Oh, he didn't die. Or he's just, you know, he's knocked out, whatever, whatever. And so, I mean, I personally, I think he's dead, you know. But there's a lot of people that don't believe he's dead. I don't know. I think him being dead would be a better story, but I don't want to. I would don't want to believe it. So I'm like in a... I'm in, um, what is it, Schrodinger's cat? I don't know if you know that. <laughs> like, that's what I am about cowboy people. Like, I don't believe he's dead, but I don't believe he's alive. I don't think he's alive, so. Right, right. Yeah. Well, in my book, he's dead, so. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It makes for a better story, I think, because like, right, it's right. complete. Right. But, but um. Yeah, let, yeah, let them interpret it from, because that's where the discussion's coming. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and it makes for good, like, is he, is he not? Like, you don't know. Right, right, right. Like, um. I don't watch a lot of television shows because mm-hmm. um, I got burned after Walking Dead because mm. it wasn't worth it. All that. That's the other thing, yeah. It wasn't worth it. The, the last good show that I, well, I'm watching WandaVision. I like it so far. Me too. Um, yeah, I like it a lot so far. I haven't seen the latest episode, mm-hmm. but I, I like it so far. But oh, um, I won't spoil it for you. Oh, yeah. No, someone kind of did already on Twitter. Oh. But yeah, it's all right. Been... Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all right. But. Um, my, my thing is this, um, one show that I did watch that I really enjoyed, um, I ended up watching it because I, I, I had gotten injured uh, uh, at my job, but this was years ago, like 2013 mm-hmm. and I had nothing to do except for go to therapy and sleep. So after physical therapy, I would, I had the whole day to myself and I wasn't used to that. So, uh, I started watching Netflix and I saw they had Breaking Bad. Oh, that's a good show. Yeah, I haven't have you know I still haven't watched the final season. You should. I uh, know. But I'll say this about Breaking Bad: it was worth it. People say it has like the perfect ending, and I really need to get on that because I like I binged it right before the final season because I was like I'm gonna watch the final season like as it comes out, mm-hmm. and then I think I just got like busy and I was just like oh, I'll just watch it later and then you know later it never happened. Yeah, watch um, watch the final yeah. season and 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 the movie afterwards. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the movie. Yeah, the movie was good, too. Okay. I did see a little bit of Better Call Saul, and that was really good, too. I haven't seen it yet, uh, but I heard people say it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. So, I liked it. I just so, saw a few episodes, though. Yeah, because it's, you know, it's a prequel, so right. um, I, I will check it out. But um, mm-hmm. that's what I feel about that's what I feel about that show. Like, Walking Dead, I hate, mm-hmm. that, sh- I hate that show with a passion. I was like, the show wasted my time. It really did. Mm-hmm. It really did. It was just, just keep just keep teasing me, and I and I don't want and um, so I don't watch a lot of television shows because of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame me. It's really a uh, a gamble now, especially because there's so much and it's like so little time. You don't want to dedicate so much time, and then it's like uh. Yeah, because everybody wanted me to get into Game of Thrones, and look what happened with that. Yeah. And, I, and then my sister Damn. told me my sister mm-hmm. pretty much broke the whole series down to me, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, thanks for saving me the the headache. Same yeah, s- yeah. No. <laughs> it was a great show until the end. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I'm like, oh good, yeah. you, sh- you saved me, you saved me dozens and dozens of hours. Thanks. Yeah. So, but that's but that's why I'm not saying anime doesn't do that. There are anime mm-hmm. that's like, oh man, this was this was good until the end. Yeah, this, mm-hmm. this end fell apart, but um, and I'm I'm careful with what I choose to watch, but but what I how I do it now, it, mm-hmm. the juice is always worth the squeeze. You know, mm-hmm. so that that's how I look at shows now. Yo, is the juice worth the squeeze? 
<laughs> I love that. Oh, it's mm, just true. I want orange juice. It's, it's yeah. true. You know, Sailor Moon was worth the squeeze. Yes. You know? Definitely. You know, I recommend Villain Saga to you guys, too, a lot. I, I think that's a yeah, fantastic, I, underrated anime. Um, I hear great things about Villain yeah. Saga. Yeah. I mean, Demon, Demon Slayer, is, it's, it's cool. I like it a lot. Uh, I think it's overrated. I think Villain Saga mm. is way better, but to each his own. What do I know? Yeah. Yeah, for me. To each his own. Right, I, um, right. I haven't, I saw a little bit of Demon Slayer. I'm not caught up. I've been slacking on anime for like a while and like lately I've been in an um, anime mood so I like I've been finishing series and like catching up and it's been fun so I feel like I'm definitely gonna watch Space Dandy definitely gonna watch Vinland Saga and it's another anime oh I'm about to start um I think it's called School Rumble oh yeah my sister wants me to watch it I, I remember that that's a classic that's like an old school anime yeah um, I used um, to see that at uh I used to see that at the there was a store back in the day, in the '90s, called uh, Record Town Music, which mm, which which event, which eventually turned into um, Fye. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know if you know this, but Fye had a fuck ton of anime. Yeah, like, that's where I bought my Sailor Moon DVDs. Yeah, in the, um, yeah. Early so 2000s. right. So well, yeah. I, okay. So I, I think I know you're gonna. I think I. I think you know. I'm, I think you know about this place. So mm-hmm. Sawgrass Mall. Yes. The FYE over there. Yeah. So much anime. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think I was either getting it from there or the Pembroke Lakes Mall. So we're both from Florida, as for anyone who's listening. Yeah, I used to live in Florida, South Florida. <laughs> Florida. Yeah. And I have family there, so I was always visiting for years. Yeah. Ago. So Sawgrass, so, for sure. So yes. I, yes. And I remember, this is, this, is, this is a long time ago. It was like 2009. Um. Mm-hmm. My cousin's like, oh, let's go to FIE. The FIE got a lot of anime DVDs you can get. Because when yeah. I came to visit one time, and we went over there, and I said, there was a whole giant corner of mm-hmm. just of just anime. The of DVDs. anime DVDs. Yep. And, you know, one or two Blu-rays. Because, you know, Blu-ray animes weren't really... They didn't have that mm-hmm. many at the time. This is 2009. So, mm-hmm. it was just... It was just mind-boggling how much anime FYE... Like, for the real old heads that are, like... Fye was a goat when it came. To, like, if you want, if you want to get anime, like your your collection, Fye mm-hmm. was a spot to go. You know, if, yeah. you, if you weren't living in New York City or whatever, that was a place to go. And um, there's an Fye too. I don't know if it's still there, but there's one in Long Island at Roosevelt Field. Um, I would go there. They had a lot of anime too, but not as much as the one in Sawgrass in, in, mm-hmm. in Florida. Not as much. Not nearly as much. Um, mm-hmm. But. Uh, yeah, that's where my cousin would get her Sailor Moon fix. She she'd go over there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I got um the uncut soup uh S season uh from there, and that was the first time I was able to watch that season because I got it like right before I think it came to Toonami, mm-hmm. and um and then I just like I remember just seeing they had the other two seasons two other two seasons uncut, and it was like. I think like a hundred dollars each or something. And I was just like, I want Ooh, it so man. bad, but I can't afford it. Yeah, because <laughs> like, I was like man. young at the time. I was like twelve, maybe at the most. So yeah, there was no way. I was like, I think, and I got that season three, um, just because I think I got it for like Christmas one year. Like I just asked for it, even though it was really expensive. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Man. Yeah. I think, yeah, those other ones I just looked at them I just I still remember the case like I might buy them off of eBay one year just off of like <laughs> for the my young self who couldn't get it <laughs> <laughs> oh definitely definitely um yeah. I, will, I will say this though um mm-hmm. I got my other cousin to consider them too um oh, I love it yeah and this is around the early 2000s um because when I would come up to New York in 99 2000 um, I would go buy. I would try to buy my anime tapes over there because there was when I lived in Maryland. There was an anime hobby shop called Creature Zone in, in um, mm-hmm. this place called Rockville, Maryland. It's no longer around, but it was mm-hmm. an anime hobby shop, and um, they had the Gundam figures, the Gundam uh, model kits, or whatever. And they used to play those commercials on, in, on, on, on during Toonami back in the late '90s and early 2000s. And um, that they they had like you know fan subs of Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT because if you were a kid back then, Dragon Ball GT was a holy grail because it, it, it has it, it had it aired 
in America yet. Mm-hmm. So if you had Dragon Ball GT, whether it was the, the game on the PlayStation or or any of the fan su- or, or the fan subs back then, like you were the man, you were the shit. Yeah. Like you know, like we used to we used to lose our like our heads would explode just thinking of like Dragon Ball GT. So, oh my god, Super Saiyan Four, Goku! Oh my god, Gogeta! Like level four was like mm-hmm. it was insane at the time. So, um. You know, I'll go to Crazy Zone and get my little fix. I liked, I really liked them because they, with the fan subs, unlike the ones in, in Chinatown and NYC at the time, um, they labeled all their tapes. Um, oh. Yeah, like they, they had the tapes, and mm-hmm. they put the tape, the labels, you know, where you put the, the tape, the, on the, not on the top, I'm talking about at the, the side, and um, they put a label there, and it would have the image of Goku, of like what goes on in that movie, and the title. It was very, very very professional looking oh yeah it's hard for me to explain i have pictures of it though so i I still i still own a few of them still that i used to buy when i was a kid i still own them but um they were very nicely put together versus the one in new york there was just like a it was in a case and it was like a copied you know image from the vhs from japan and slapped together you know, so it was. Mm-hmm. It's Fans hard. sometimes have more love for stuff than yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyone else, yeah. But you can get, you can find more of them in New York though than you could. Mm, and okay. and around the time, this is what I, this is before I got better at finding these, uh, these anime VHS at the time. I remember it was a VHS, so um, we'd have we went all the way to Chinatown because that was the place to go back then. But then eventually, I figured out, yo, I can go to any video store in Jamaica, Queens, like nearby me, there was a video store at my grandma's house mm-hmm. and they sold, they sold anime. And then there was another spot, a video game store in, in Hollis that also sold, at, they sold video games, a lot of video games, import video games, like PS1, uh, N64, Super Nintendo, all that stuff. But they also sold anime too. So I found my, I found two spots. So I didn't have to go to Chinatown every time I wanted to get anime. And then you know they had Sailor Moon, but you know it wasn't uncut; it was the edited version. But my okay. cousin, my cousin didn't That's care. Still dope. Yeah, because yeah. it was like the, the edited version. They're like in the Disney boxes, mm-hmm. like the fluffy, you know, you know, talking about Disney yeah. VHS. Yeah. So, she, but she didn't care. She liked them. She enjoyed them. I was like, I knew they were edited, heavily edited, but she mm-hmm. didn't care. So yeah, so I was she, actually. It was harder for me to find the edited ones because I remember when I got that DVD, I was like. A confused because I was like the voices are different like this is just different yeah. it's weird yeah, and so I was just like where's the one I saw on Toonami <laughs> that's what I'm looking for <laughs> yeah the editor was the only ones I would see when I would be out and about mm-hmm. like it was hard yeah. to find the, the uncut ones yeah. at least around my around me now I ended up getting them from some random website I found them some like fan made uh, oh okay okay yeah. that's what it was that's what it and, was and uh, that's the only I don't think the original dub was ever released on dvd like that i don't think so i know they were released yeah. on vhs but but these were official mm-hmm. tapes though these were official the, oh, okay. the tapes yeah they weren't bootleg like, they were official tapes they were and they were they were just they're just edited oh okay i got you yeah, okay mine's heavily, a bootleg yeah heavily, <laughs> heavily ev- edited yeah yeah oh, but, man. But, but that's how that's how i get my fix though back then yeah man you had to somehow Oh, yeah, okay. I used to love FYE. I mean, I, f- I actually saw one in Jersey uh, a few weeks ago, maybe, maybe a few months ago. I almost, I was, I meant to go in and I just didn't. But I was just like, I want to go in just for nostalgia purposes. Like, I don't think they even sell anime anymore. But like, they still have like CDs. Like, I think I bought an Usher CD there too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I'm, I might have bought Confes- Confessions there. <laughs> Is this recently? Yeah. So, well, no, I didn't buy it confessions there but i saw fye about two months ago in jersey okay, okay. yeah i didn't buy anything I, I didn't even go inside but i was i meant to go inside but i forgot i think the one on long island is still there okay i could be wrong i'm looking at those vhs right now <laughs> oh man oh, on, on, i love it yeah they're all edited yeah i looked on ebay and the, the sailor moon um dvd they have one for like 300 for both oh. one season one and two, and I'm like, I might, I might get it. That's not bad. Why is that three hundred? They're no it's longer pricey. They're no... Even the one I bought, huh? They're they're no longer. Oh, they're the old ones, the old original ones. That yeah, one? the old ones. Yeah. Oh, they're, that's right. they're they're hard to find. Yeah. And even the one, the season three, I have. I'll look it up on eBay sometimes just to see how much it's worth, even though I'll never sell it. And oh. it's like it's pricey. 
Like, yeah, it's, uh, let me see. I'm checking right now. Oh, uh, they have one for 139 so That's not too bad. Wow. But I've seen it go up to, like, 500 for those. Wow. Yeah, so I'm, I'm never going to sell it, though. I'm like, I love this. <laughs> it's, like, I'm, one of the few I'm, original. I'm looking at the ones on, on Amazon real quick. Like, the ones that are currently out. Oh, yeah. It's actually not that expensive. I was looking at the Viz redub. I don't know why I was thinking it was so much money, but, like, each movie is, like, $15. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Right. Okay, Sailor yeah. Moon Season 1, Part 2. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, they have them in parts. Okay, they don't have the whole... Yeah. I hate when they do that Part 1, Part Me 2. Me, too. I hate when they do that. So much money. Yeah, they do have My Hero Academia, too. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I need to buy end up mine. I do have Season 1 and 2 of the Viz. But I need to buy the rest of them. Oh, you got Eventually. season one and two for the Viz. Ed. How many seasons? I bought it, but there? there's more. Five. Five, okay. Mm-hmm. So, season one. Okay, there it is. Season one, part one. Oh, this is limited edition. This Blu ray, mm-hmm. DVD, combo. Mm-hmm. Um, All that this good is $42.99. Okay, yep, how, okay I'm, right. I'm just looking it up because I'm curious. <laughs> okay, how many episodes is on here? Let me see. Mm. It doesn't say. It just it just shows hours. I think it's about twenty episodes. It says eight and a half hours. Okay, so it's so, not like let's see, what is that? Twenty thirty minutes each. So eight is two per. So that's sixteen. So seventeen mm-hmm. episodes. Yeah. But... Seventeen episodes. Okay, it's not bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. the whole first season is about forty, or maybe forty-two episodes. Okay. So, mm-hmm. I'm looking at the pictures. Or thirty-nine. So. It might be. Yeah. Oh, this limited edition is nice, though. Yeah, I got the, the first two seasons, and I really like them. Oh, it's it really comes, pretty. It comes with an art book. Yeah. I'm looking at it right now. Okay, okay. so it's, it's two it's two, DVDs, it's two Blu-rays. Well, not um, two Blu-ray cases. It's a, 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 a art book. Okay. Yeah, a DVD, Blu-ray, and art book. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, it does look nice, though. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, if Inez, Cameron, Giselle, and Gabriel were Sailor Scouts, who would they be? Oh, that's a... Okay, hold on. I gotta look at a picture of all of them so I can try to okay. point point them out. Yeah. Well, I... I feel like... Uh-huh. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go you ahead. said Inez is kind of Serena already, Sailor Moon, sort of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh... can, I can see that. Yeah. Even though she's got a cry baby, she, she does get a lot of Ds. She goes to yeah. like F's from D and D's. Definitely. D minus and stuff. I feel like Giselle be a Sailor Mars. I can see that. Okay. I can I can definitely see that. I can yeah, definitely I see that. Cameron Sailor Jupiter. I can see that too. Okay. Okay. I, feel <laughs> I can like see I'm... that. Yay. Yeah. I don't know Gabriel though. I'm no, sure. no, no, no. Gabriel will be Melvin. <laughs> oh my god. He's not that dorky. <laughs> no, nah, he's annoying though. <laughs> Oh, true. <laughs> He's true. definitely not a Tostito mask. Girls do yeah, not swoon over here. him. Yeah. Girls do not swoon over him. He's like, what's what's with this guy? That's hilarious. Yeah. Or like, uh, you ever seen that movie Billy Madison? <laughs> oh yeah, Adam Sandler. Yeah. Remember when he, <laughs> remember when he get he got to high school, and then he was like talking to this girl. He's like, I don't know, man. I'm so nervous. Like, I don't know. I'm just doing, doing high school all over again. I don't know if I can make it. And she looks at him. She goes, Stop talking to me. <laughs> that's Gabriel. <laughs> and it's how everyone treats him like, uh. Yeah, girls is like, again. girls like, stop, yeah. stop, stop talking to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that's how I look at him. Like, he's definitely Melvin. He's no tuxedo mask. That is hilarious. Yeah. Why would I say oh, that? That's yeah. way too easy. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see Jupiter as Cameron. Because Cameron okay. is very, um. She's very, um. She can be girly, though. She's not like, she's not like she's a tomboy either. Like, you need the same thing with, um. She's a, she has a, no, she ain't definitely not so much, mm-hmm. but um, she just does uh, like you know, she's a cop, so she has to. She's mm-hmm. not, she's not afraid to get you know, to you know, down uh, and dirty. Uh, uh, get down mm-hmm. and dirty. She, well, not a dirty cop, you know, but yeah, <laughs> but she knows like when she when, when it's time to you know, you know, pull up her shoulders and get to work. She's not afraid of doing that. She's not afraid of hard work. Right. So I could definitely see her like Jupiter, mm-hmm. um, and. You know, she has a tough exterior, but she definitely does have a very soft, soft spot. For her. Um, and I can see it. She looks out like she looks. I look at her how um, Inez looks up to her like a big sister in a sense. Mm. And um, how Inez looks at Giselle, she looks at her like a um, 
intimidating. Not in a bad way. But just like, wow. You know, yeah. Like, I want to be like that. Or She's a I force. Aspire, yeah, I mm-hmm. aspire to be more... I aspire to be more upfront, you know, or or more... Um, whereas uh, Cameron's like, hey, I hope you studied. Mm-hmm. <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> and then Gabriel's like... That. And then Gabriel's like, yeah, let's go get some pizza. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Or, like, he, he'll... He'll encourage bad behavior. Mm. And it's like, He's a little Santa Moon too, probably. <laughs> right. Well, he encourages. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, I can see that. Yeah. He, he, like, think about it, he encourages bad behavior. Mm-hmm. But for the people that have read it, you'll know what I'm, it's like. Why? It's it's, 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 there's a lot of irony behind it. As to. Him oh and, yeah, it's right? true. There's a lot of irony behind it. It's like, okay, why are you encouraging bad behavior when you when you when you yeah. should be such and such instead? Right. So, it's a lot of like, but it'll you know, mm-hmm. it'll it'll make sense in the long run, where, um, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why. Right. Um, do you have any advice for anyone who wanted to start writing their own or creating their own manga? Just start. Mm-hmm. Just start. Um, mm-hmm. because you, listen, you're gonna fail a lot. <laughs> no, yeah. it's true. Like, like, yeah. like the people who are successful now. It's because they failed a lot and they didn't, but they kept going afterwards. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, listen, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I'm not saying, trying to scare people either, but there's certain things, there's certain, there's certain, there are instances sometimes where it's like, yo, you gotta throw in the towel because you're destroying yourself or you're hurting, you know, if that makes sense, what I'm saying. Um, mm-hmm. like, like for instance, there, there are times where I would destroy, like my credit cards, my money, I go crazy. And sometimes you have to be real back. I'm not saying I'm not saying don't go hard, but sometimes don't go too hard to the point that it hurts you. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, what I'm saying, it's just like everything in everything in moderation. Um, because I don't, I, 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 I encourage people to work hard at what they try to do and get out, get their stuff out there, but don't sabotage yourself too. Just know when, just know when to fall back at times. Not quit, but just like, hey, let me ease off a bit. Let me, let me, let me not put my foot on the, on the, on the pedal, like put the pedal to the metal, like you know, let me, let me, let me ease off of that, 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 the gas a bit. Right. You know? Yeah. You know? I'm that not saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. What are you saying? This that makes sense. Right. And I'm not saying. I'm not saying. You know, put a pedal to the metal, and then you just, just push the brakes hard out of it. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that, but just ease off the gas and then just lightly push against the brakes from time to time, aka like take breaks at time. Take some like there's some days like I'll give you an example. Um, you know, um, I, I work I work on this website a lot because um, a lot of stuff in the background that's going on that is you know needs to be fixed or taken care of. So, you know, having a really nice website is very very expensive and very very high maintenance. And I spent a lot of money on it. And there's times where I'm either working on a site or I'm working on a book or I'm working on something TF related. And I'll be working on my laptop before I know it, like 13 hours have passed. Mm, I've had those days, yeah. Yeah. And then sometimes I'd be working just straight, 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 straight. I don't even eat. I would just take a break to go. You know, the only reason I would take a break is I had to because I had to go use the, you know, use, you know, take, a, take a piss or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I would just go, 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 keep going straight, 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 straight. And, and sometimes and when I do that, I'm like, yo, I got to take a break. Cause, or sometimes I avoid my laptop altogether because I'm like, yo, if I open up this laptop, like 13 hours are going to pass by. And I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm getting work done. I'm not, I'm not BSing, mm-hmm. but I'm like, yo, 13 hours are going to pass by and I'm, I'm just going to, you know, I was like, okay, you know what? Let me, let me close this. Let me. I have to force myself at times to play video games is what I'm saying. <laughs> like I have to force myself yeah. to distract myself. You need balance. Yeah. You need balance or just, mm-hmm. or just, well, okay, yo, let me, let me order some food. Let me order something nice for myself. Mm-hmm. So just, just take nothing wrong with going hard with your craft, but you have to take a break because you will have burnout. Yeah. And I've, I've had burnout a lot of times. I've had, I put it this way: um, between work and TF, uh, I'll never forget this summer. Um, 
I this is like about ten years ago. Or, or now eleven, about to be eleven. Uh, summer twenty ten. I'll never forget that. I was about twenty four years old. And hands down the worst summer ever. Well, the best slash worst summer. Because at the time when I was working, we were getting like at my job we were getting dogged. Like you know, I I'm a blue collar I'm a blue collar worker. So I do a lot of physical work, physical mm-hmm. labor. And we were getting dogged throughout the summer. And you know, we get we can we get holidays off. And we can put our holidays off any time of the year. We got to put in for it in the calendar. And the area we worked at, they they embargoed us from using our holidays for the whole summer. Wow. And, and we couldn't use any of our days off, any of our holidays or days off, or, or PPT, none of that. And we, we just got, we just got straight, like, no Vaseline. Straight hard work, no Vaseline. I, I, mm-hmm. I I'm not trying to get into details. I'm just saying it was very, very, a very, very, very tough summer I had. Mm-hmm. And between that and this was the early years of tough one, but I was working with a coworker of mine who was also an artist at the time. And I'd meet up with him on my days, I had Sunday, Mondays off. I'd meet up with him on my days off and um, we discuss our plans for TF and stuff. And I, I, I always look forward to Sunday, to Monday night because that's when I would go meet up with him. i drive down to Brooklyn. And, and we meet up at a McDonald's and sit down and just talk about our plans for TF. And that was like, that was my, my guiding light, you know? And um, I was stressed out to the point that, like, I would, I'd be taking, at the time I had a high top fade, to the point that I'd be taking a shower and, like, chunks of my hair was falling out. Wow. Yeah, like, my hair was falling out at the time. My hair, I was 24 years old, my hair, and I asked my dad, you know, check my hair. My dad was like, wow. I don't know what to say, man, you're going bald. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no! <laughs> yeah. But um, my mom told me, I told my mom about it. My mom was like, listen, let me tell you, stop stressing yourself out. First off, mm-hmm. next time you go to barber, make them shave everything off. Mm-hmm. Get a low cut. And stop stressing yourself out. And uh, I did that. And I also bought hair food as well. <laughs> um, I don't know why you're laughing, but okay. <laughs> no, I just wasn't expected that. You, like, oh, you expect? Oh, you expect? I wasn't expecting oh. the hair food. <laughs> no, she didn't tell me that. I just did. And she yeah. said, stop stressing yourself. So I, I stopped stressing myself out. Um, whenever my supervisor would try to overwork me, you know, I'd flip them off and I'd walk away. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I I would just do that, and the reason why I did that because I'm a good worker, and they know they they can't be, you know, if 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 you if you're treating us bad and we leave, you you're screwed. You can't get the work done because no one yeah. else wants to do the work. So, uh, long story short, I calmed down, and then lucky at the time I was lucky enough I was able to save my hair, and it grew back. <laughs> it grew hey. back healthy. Yeah, it, yeah. I was, mm-hmm. I was stressed. I was stressed. I was losing hair. Mm-hmm. I was, I was losing sleep. I was, I was out of control. And and even with TF, at other like I've had a lot of ups and downs where at times, um, I lose too much weight. I gain too much weight. I, my up and down up because I would just keep stressing myself out, overworking myself, all types of things. My bags under my eyes, you know, all that type of stuff, all because I wasn't, you know. Self care goes first, man. If you, you mm-hmm. I know I'm getting into a, too much, a lot into it, but just self care is very important. Like you got, you got to put yourself first before before your craft. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, especially I, I, if you're a black creator, you know we have you know, our community is known for having bad health, and mm-hmm. you know getting 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 the proper exercise, and eating right, and and getting enough sleep, like. That, that helps you a lot. You become not, not only sharper, but you, you just become, it's not used to look good or anything. Not, not, got nothing to do with that. It's just, it's just, it's just good for your, 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 your mental health. Yeah. I feel like people don't talk about that a lot. Like right, it's not right. even just like to take care of yourself, but it's also like not good for your work. Like you'll oh, get burnout, no. you'll get tired. Like you're not going to produce well. Yeah. Like you, you, you yeah. really need that balance, you know, yeah. and just to take care of yourself. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to get in. I won't get into mm-hmm. details yet. Maybe down the line after everything is said and done. Mm-hmm. But if I, if I, I'll just put it this way: if I told you the the, the the amount of work I was given, and I would 
leave work and finish work late at night and to go home and work on TF. And it's like, I look back, I'm like, I don't know how the fuck I did that shit. I have, like, I'm like, I have no idea. And it was because you got to have that drive, too, you know? Like, yeah. Because you'll get discouraged a lot. And um, I think the reason why I, I, I was able to do that is because um, I'm very stubborn. And I'm like, I'm not giving anybody the satisfaction of making me quit. That's how stubborn mm-hmm. I am. I was like, I hate you so much. I won't let you, I won't let you, like, if that makes sense what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> like, my, my, it's not good to say this, but <laughs> my hate for the people that used to overwork me and stress me out, mm-hmm. my hate for them build up so much that I wanted to prove to them that you're not going to break me. If that makes mm-hmm. sense what I'm saying. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I right. think it's, it's a healthy motivation, I think. Yeah, just don't hate anybody. <laughs> Yeah, just, <laughs> just don't get physical with it. Just don't get like, physical, yeah. yeah. Don't use that, yeah, put that <laughs> mm-hmm. towards something, you know, whether you want to mm-hmm. run Productive, or you want to, yeah. yeah, do push-ups. If you're mad at somebody, just punch your shadow box, you know, mm-hmm. or, or do push-ups. Um, I highly recommend those type of things. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. just yeah, just put that, put that towards something positive. So yeah. that's what motivated me. Yeah. So I, I, as a creator, like, for people like yo if it's something you really believe in go for it and i will say this a lot of my co-workers even some of my supervisors they're fans of tf and they always supported me a lot mm-hmm. of them did you know i i got i i i i can't i can't even say no a lot of people supported me you know supervisors my supervisors my managers you know my other co-workers they they bought tf merch they bought comics they bought you know hoodies hats mm-hmm. all that they always supported me so um, they even encouraged me. He's like, yo, you want to do this the rest of your life? Don't you want to get your stuff out? It's like, I'm trying. Right. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, having a good support system, mm-hmm. that's good too. Because at the time, um, if anyone's out there, like, if, if, you, if, you, if there's something you want to do and somebody don't support you, you'll cut them off, man. Let them go. And you don't have to cut them off like, oh, I don't want to be your friend. Just don't say anything. So, okay. And then in your head, you're like, yeah, you, you out. You're out of here. Yeah, because you, you don't need that negativity in your life. Because I, I mean, at the time, my girlfriend at the time, you know, I, 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 I at one time I forgot about doing TF. I said, eh, you know, that's fine. I got my job. I'm working full time. I'm making good money. You know, I have my girlfriend. You know, life is good. Mm-hmm. You know what? That's fine. I, it's a stupid dream. Whatever. Just let it sit under my bed. Couldn't stop thinking about it. Had dreams about it. All types of stuff. And one day, you know, she, you know, she was over. We were just lying down and talking and. I said, I don't know, man. I'm thinking about doing this thing again. You know, it's, 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 it's cartoon. You know, I told her about it a little bit before, but I said, you know, I, th- I was thinking about doing it again. And she was like, oh, God. You know. Oh. Mm-hmm. You know what? I said, say no more, fam. I, I dumped her. Yeah. I dumped her, and then uh, your she, was, dream. she was crying yeah. and everything, all that type of stuff. I was like, well, you laughed at me, so I, I told you something I wanted to do, and you laughed at me, so. Obviously, mm-hmm. you, you don't think much of me, so hey, have a nice life. And that was it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, she still wants, she still regrets it. She still wants me to come back to her. I said, yeah, I'm good. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's the way I look at it. People don't support your dream. Uh, I mean, listen, they don't have to. It's fine. You know, they don't have, oh, you can support me. No, but mm-hmm. just, uh, keep it moving. Yeah, just have, if you have, if, if you have at least, you know, your support system doesn't have to be big. If you have at least two people that got your back, you're good. Yeah. You're good. You know, that's the way I look at it. And and you'll go much farther. And I, I'll say the two people that supported me the most was my, my, my sister and my cousin. Uh, hey, shout yeah. out to the family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, is my, the same uh, cousin like Sailor Moon? No, this is a different cousin. Okay, my old, I was about to this say, is actually right. my older cousin, uh, Jeffrey, he who introduced me to, uh, who actually introduced me to, uh, to Dragon Ball and, and you know, Guyver. That, that, that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's my older cousin. I always looked up to him, but yeah, he, um, he always, he, he always, uh, supported me, what I was doing, mm-hmm. you know, so he's the MVP. And, you know, my sister was, she was, she was a fan of TF from day one, you know, nice. before it was even TF, so. Yeah, I remember she used to run your, like, social and stuff, even. Oh, that was my little sister. <laughs> okay, oh gosh, man, I'm getting everything mixed up. All right. Oh, I have three sisters. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. Okay. But, but yeah, that, my older sister, she's been there 
So she 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 literally saw me come up with the idea. That's awesome. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. 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 So, so oh. that, that's my advice to, uh, to to anyone that's trying to get their stuff out there. Yeah. You know? Um. So as you may remember, at the end of Sailor Moon, she had a huh? Sailor Moon says phrase. Oh yeah. <laughs> what would your phrase be? So Sailor Stefan says. You know what that reminds me of? Like Sonic says. Ha. Oh, ha. Ha ha! Yeah, could so. be too. Could be Sonic says. Uh, y'all yeah, give you both. Yeah, give you both. Could be both. both. Give you both. Sonic Stefan. That's, that's my childhood. Yeah. Oh, he had to ask. Oh. Hmm. S S S. S S S. S S S. I'm just kidding. Um. Uh, Sailor Sonic. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. I don't know if I've seen that mashup. You know what they said about Sonic, right? If you put your name in front of it, there's almost everything Sonic. Like. Oh wow! Really? Yeah. So just they look like Victoria Sonic. Yeah, just put like I think it's like your name, the Hedgehog, and and then it exists. <laughs> it's oh there. There's fan art of it. I, I looked up Stefan the Hedgehog. It's there. <laughs> there is a Sailor Sonic fan art. I'm looking it up now. There's whatever you put, this whatever you put, stuff. something the Hedgehog or Sonic, it is there. There's a fan art for oh it. Now, that's like one of the internet rules. I don't know if you heard about that, but <laughs> oh my god, there is a Victoria the Hedgehog. And she's <laughs> I told you, and I she's told you. purple, which is my favorite color. Oh, that's my sister's favorite color too. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was. Yeah. I guess I would say similar to what I just said about anyone uh, for that wants to start off. Um, mm -hmm. um, Stefan says, um, "Work hard at what your work hard at what you, at your goals, because at the end of the day, in order to reach your goals, it takes hard work over talent. Talent is just." I look at talent. Not, I'm not trying to say talent doesn't it, it, is it important, but I would say talent is more of a is ten percent, whereas hard work is ninety percent. So, I would say Stefan says hard work over talent any day. I like it. Yeah, because. Um, I got this far with TF because of hard work. Mm -hmm. um, because it had nothing to do with my talents. Um, because of, people say, how'd you get this far? I said, I worked, I, I worked at my job. I worked hard. And I saved my money. And I mean, at the end of the day, the money is what... I, I had a lot of money at my disposal because I worked very hard for the money. To right. make the money. In order to fund something that I believed in. And... I mean, that's honestly the, how I got far. I, I had a lot of money because I worked very hard for it. Mm -hmm. And I, I know people not, may not want to hear about it, but it's the truth. Because mm -hmm. um, you can be a hard worker, but if you don't have the income to, like, get certain things done, because you can't do everything yourself, you're going to need help, whether it's other artists or other, other creators or, or other people that know how to do web design or, or get merchandise done or anything like that, you're going to need help. There's no way around it. It's inevitable. And yeah. In order to make that happen, you need to get the proper funds for it. And if you have to work at a CVS or a McDonald's, or it doesn't matter what you do as a job, at least it, so long as you're working towards a, an end goal, and you have to look at it as a stepping stone instead of uh, instead of something that's hurting you. But you can, but you know, if it's obviously if it's not good for your mental health, then leave. You know, um, because it, you know you don't you don't want that to destroy. You. You know your mental health because that's very important mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm a very i'm a huge supporter of of, of self-care and, and, and mental health because i only think, i don't talk about it too much but i have a my best friend i grew up with um he committed suicide when he was 25 mm -hmm. uh, yeah he hung himself this is like almost 10 years ago and um i use that as fuel to say i don't want to i don't want to get to that point where I feel like I don't want to live anymore and mm -hmm. he wouldn't want. So, and I, you know, you know, I, I still talk to his brother, his brother as well. And I, I use that as a way of, I use it as fuel to help me keep going every single day. Um, because he was, you know, he was, he was, he was, he was black mm -hmm. and he had very, he had a lot of mental issues and I didn't even notice it until I didn't realize that until, um, until afterwards, just looking back at when we were kids, I found out he was he was schizophrenic. 
Mm. I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know that. And then I look back, I, where he had instances of it, where he would just black out and get into a fight with somebody and just beat the shit out of him. But, oh, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, your men, your mental health is, is always number one. Uh, especially, especially something that you know, a lot of people don't talk about it. Like a lot of there's a lot of black men that, that are very suicidal, very depressed, and a lot of people don't talk about that. I think more people should. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you know, if you need help, seek that help. You know, whether it's a psychiatrist, whether it's somebody you can co- uh, 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 confide with. Um, that's you know, that's how I look at it. You know, yeah, that's how I look at it. Yeah. So definitely, um, I can see that that would definitely be motivating, and just you know, using that in his memory. Yeah, 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 absolutely, mm. absolutely, absolutely. Mm. That keeps me going. Yeah, and, and Sonic. <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sonic. Yeah, I love Sonic. He's an MVP. Sonic is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what's next for you? Where can people find you? Oh, um. I'm on IG. You can catch me at uh, Teflon Funk, T E P H L O N F U N K. Um, TeflonFunk.com, Facebook.com slash Teflon. Just Teflon Funk all across. Like I said, T E P H L O N F U N K. So it's the same thing across. That's where you can find me. Um, if I'm not posting, I'm working on TF or I'm at work. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. That's where you can find me. Awesome. And once again, I'm Victoria L. Johnson. You can find me at Miss Old School. That's Miss Old School with a K. Or you can find the podcast at Mooney's Club on Twitter and Mooney's underscore club on Instagram. And we have merch now at Mooney'sClub.com. So if you guys want some Sailor Moon inspired merch, you can head over there and get some cool stuff. And thanks, Stefan, for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I, mm-hmm. I know it's like, what, two hours now? <laughs> so, I know. <laughs> I, you I talk, talk forever. <laughs> I, talk too, I talk too much, though. I, talk, I know I talk too much. I feel like it's just so easy to talk to you. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I don't talk to a lot of people much. That's what it is. Um, I feel honored. <laughs> oh, no, it's not even just that. Um, uh, you know, I always have a lot to say. Cause mm-hmm. I, I've seen a lot. <laughs> yeah. Maybe more than I should be seen. <laughs> I've seen a lot. But, um, I appreciate you. Thank, thank you for having me. I, I really, um, I really do appreciate. You. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me.